This is part of the reason I think we get it different. <laughs> I feel like they be, she be like we sending every time we call. <laughs> I gotta go in here and sit on the dick with, with these people. I feel like, I feel like she do a prayer before she walks out. I'm serious. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? Everybody good? Ready to get rocking? Oh, I'm going to take Ty's stuff. I'm going to just pick it up and start spraying it where I want to. <laughs> right? I'm going to be like, oh, I'm doing it for you. Mm -hmm. Notice he didn't come in here and spray my side there. I know you done that already. I saw you yesterday being, uh, doing the right thing. Did you know 81,000 people died from the flu last year? How many? 81,000. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good size city. Right. Took a moment to share the broadcast, y'all. I'm ready for the weekend, even though I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to binge watch. I fell asleep. This, this thing is throwing my clock off. It's like, because then I sit in the chair. And when you sit in the chair, the chair has the sleep effect. So if you sit in the chair at 6 o'clock, and then what I found myself is that I woke up at time to go to bed and couldn't go to sleep. What y'all watching on Netflix? I need some Netflix love. Over a stress. I think I'm gonna do a new intro this weekend. Um, probably make some videos, have some good times. I'm having the hardest time convincing my daughter to take this seriously. I really am. It was like. 
it's like they truly do believe they're invincible and it's like she has an opposition for everything so yesterday mm -hmm. I was like you want to go back to school go go stay in your apartment how much money you got <laughs> I was like because your allowance is out for the rest of the month so <laughs> you spent that on spring break <laughs> Tell them to come get you, okay? Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world! This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Hey, good morning, Maze. Todd, you know I do all that, and you're like, hey, good morning, Maze. Toilet you paper. Toilet paper, toilet paper, toilet paper. You ain't got none? You can get it delivered on April 28th. At this ah, you, so are you constipated? Is that what the problem is? Uh, no, no, Maze. I'm pretty creative in this kind of stuff. But I was just shocked. You know what? I was good. Well, I had a really, you know, this toilet paper thing isn't as really a big a deal. You know, I was thinking, let's all get bidets. Just everybody do like Hans and get a bidet. Todd, you got hey, bidets. That's what we got to do. We got to figure out how to get that dang bidet to work. A bidet man. or get a water hose. You can just run a water hose because a lot of people, if you're on the second floor, yeah, you can just. summer. You can run the water hose up and then just, you know, like stand over the toilet and spray it and whoosh, whoosh it all away. It's industrial strength, though. Could you imagine like a power washer? That'd be painful. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But you know how we do at the morning show. Got to say what's up to the WVON morning show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? There it is. All right, now I got to say what's up to my musical conductor of the Soul Plane. Who's Sonia? I think my body clock was off. Because yesterday, I was feeling like we were supposed to be at the uh, Illinois Minotti podcast, but we kind of canceled it so we could get everything together. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I was seeing craziness. Uh, Sonia, how you feeling this morning? You feeling good? Okay, well, I'm feeling great, all things considered. So let's do this. Let's get this thing up to 50,000 feet so we can look down and make sure whatever you do, avoid China because we do not want to see the Chinese virus. Oh, did I call it the Chinese virus? <laughs> Somebody called it the Kung Flu. <laughs> <laughs> I was cracking up yesterday. I mean, I was seeing all the, you know, President Trump, you, it's like if you could, I almost enjoy, it's like there's so much comedy you can take out of these things. Sometimes I feel like though people are sitting around watching, waiting for the pounce. Like, I got it, I heard him. He said Chinese. He's a racist. I'm like, so is Chinese food racist? No. Like, what am I allowed to say? I, I got it. Uh, so what am I allowed to say 
Uh, so like no, you, he is who he is. So when when you when you stay in character, people notice it. Oh well, I was gonna say though that um, just for the record, just for the record, yes, Chinese. So wait. I guess my question, because well, you know, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it because I think that's a whole other segment. But I, I actually might swap around because I was going to make that a segment. But then I found out that uh, the full court press is on to get Larry Hoover out of jail. Um, did you see this on the front page? Hey. He's trying to get under the First Step Act. Well, they're not trying to get him out of jail, but get him out of federal Supermax. Oh, yeah. And yeah. move him from Supermax to state. Yeah. Uh, Supermax is kind of, uh, that's like old. Cool, torture. Man, did you? Uh, you know what? I was watching. Uh, oh, I can't think of the movie with Jamie Lannister. I was telling you he's the top boss or boss guy or whatever it was. He was like a businessman who went to jail, and then he joined like the Aryan Brotherhood. He was like this nice guy, and then he joined the Aryan Brotherhood, and then he rose to the top of it. But he got sentenced to that jail in Colorado, and man, it was crazy. Like everybody came out. Everybody was in a cell, but then you came out to work out in a cell next to every. It was crazy. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, uh, they. I was after watching the um, what's his name story, the um, Khalif Browder story. The whole concept of solitary can Wait be fun. Who's Khalif Browder? I can't remember. Give me the slap. Give me the slap sound like the. Whoosh. Khalif Browder is the young man who was sentenced to New York, who w went to jail in New York, never convicted for stealing a back, or for, they said he stole a backpack. He refused to admit to it because he said he didn't do it, and he wound up sitting in jail for three years on Rikers Island yes, for a backpack. Oh, I remember him, yes. Yeah, right, 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 right. Same thing, man. Same, so I was just like, whoa. Um, dang, man, I just think it's crazy. All right, look, let me move on. Uh, two officers, did you see the two officers were fired yesterday? For shooting that teenager after ro 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 after he st and there was a alleged car theft and then the two police officers shot. Remember, it was the video and it was from the body cam and you could see him and he had his gun turned to the side like he was on Hawaii Five O or something. And he <laughs> shot out. He yeah, shot like eighteen right. shots into a, a stove. The kids were going away and he shot eighteen shots. Somebody got killed and now him and his partner are fired. Which oh, I think. You talking about the cops was shooting like? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The kids just had the car. However, I do think that we got to do something about these carjackings. Did you see that? Yeah, you know, a carjacking is actually a... Uh, vehicular. Well, it's a violent offense. Yeah, I, it should be. Yeah. I mean, I think of... I, you know, I don't... Where... I want to know where the circuit breaker is. Like, where is where is the circuit breaker? When you get the gun, you see the little lady... And you say, I've got it, I'm going to steal her car, I'm going to take it, I'm going to run, and I'm going to jump in it. Even if there's kids in it. Like, where is your circuit breaker that says, I can't do this. This is wrong. It's like uh, the kid who shot the lady when he was trying to take her uh, robber, you know, armed robbery. And they asked him, why did you shoot her? And he said... Because she was there. <laughs> no, he said, because she wouldn't give me my stuff, and I had the gun. Like... Man, I'm going to tell you, man. I, I I was just reading a story about these carjackings, right, downtown. And, like, I was trying. So, Todd, I was trying to explain to my daughter about why I felt like, you know, I was like, she's like, well, what time do I have to come in? And I was like, you got to be in by 11 because that's when I go to bed and I want to go to sleep. I mean, what do you think is going to happen out there? What is, and it's like, I feel like, can I tell you what I thought about last night? And I'm, I know this sounds crazy. But with nobody on the streets, where are the homeless people? And when we come back, will they still be there? And if they don't have a place to be right now when all this stuff is, they are, and there's no people giving money, no nothing, they are like the zombies at night, in my oh, estimation. Man, I about that. If there's nobody walking, if there's around, nobody walking yeah. around giving them money or anything like that, then they've got to find a way to survive. And if you just happen to be walking down the street in the zombie apocalypse, because I took a picture yesterday when I left here, I was on Wacker Drive, and there were three people, literally. Literally. Let's talk about it all when we come back. It's Talk Chicago 1690. Thursday. How y'all feeling this morning?
we're all here and rocking with you. I just didn't have Sonya's camera ready at the beginning. That's all. Sorry, guys. I was in here thinking I was so far in advance. Um, so maybe I'll switch up and I won't do a half hour and a half hour. I want to talk about the Larry Hoover thing. Because, you know, once we get through, Todd gonna get Todd going to have a crew waiting outside for him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! I never forget when we was talking about that the other day. You had so many comments on the whole. Don't nobody want to talk about that. Don't you even get into that. That was so funny. I got so many calls from GDs like, "What's up? He don't like us." I, was like, I don't like the whole concept at all. I think that what this is what happens when children think they're men, and so when you're a child, you're immature. So you think that being a man is being in a group that is rough and tough and oh I'm gonna beat somebody we're gonna wear this all stuff no being a man is taking care of your neighborhood your family and your community they feel like they're doing that but but they're not they, they feel that <laughs> because they are immature when they start this thing they never actually I feel sorry because they, you don't get a chance to grow when you start your life at eight and trying to be an adult so you don't never get the chance to be a child. You start out. But what if you don't start at eight? What if you start at like twelve? I know a lot of people that started right, when they went to not, college. That's still a child. You have no concept of what the whole world and community is about, and that's why we have all this trouble in our neighborhood. You think all like this trouble in our neighborhood just just because we don't have capital? Well, actually, I think I related, it is. I related this before. If you look at the poor countries, the children are always the ones who suffer the most and in the end they do turn out to be the most vicious of the community. Uh, for one thing there's more children than there are adults. So you ever watch that movie uh the one with Idris Elba when uh uh Mon been pretty busy. but the one when he was the general and they were like the child soldiers in Africa. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, you oh, should watch awful. that while you're over. It's terrible, though. Yeah, yeah it's right. terrible moment. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When you realize that the general is also a child rapist. Oh, I know too much already. I'm not watching that. Yeah, you got to watch it. It's yeah. really a good movie. It really is. It's like it's just the point in which you be like, Dad. You wonder what the problem was. It's like, but I'm telling you. The movie is like good. Like it shows how a kid goes from being living a normal life to the herd mentality and then how they make you kill somebody and chop them up and then you tu they turn into these savages over the and then they become more ruthless than adults cuz they don't have any concept of life and death and all of that stuff and it just becomes norm. I was just like, "Damn." Yes. It's awful. This isn't the first time children have been used this way. Boom, ba da, ba da. Boom, ba da, ba da. They were chopping men up. They were chopping men down. It's an ancient Chinese art. Everybody knew their part. From a fainting to a slip. Kicking from the hip. Whoa! Those cats will pass as long. Whoa! Catch the wizard. Frightening. Blah! 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 Let's get it on. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Josh Trojan. Hey, Ty. I feel sorry for the, the people who aren't on Facebook Live and couldn't see your wonderful movie. You just, hey, man. Do you remember on Saturday or Friday nights or Sundays after church when the karate movies would come on? I don't. You must not have, have the El Roy, El Roy channel. No, El Roy. Yeah. No. I don't have it anymore either. It, it, it went off our cable like last month. But they would show Chinese films. You like know who owns that? Saturday. Who? Your boy. <laughs> El Rey. 
I right think that's on. the station he owns. Yeah, he bought like a, and it just plays reruns all the time. Yes. Yeah, that's your boy. That's dude over on. Uh, that that's that's the dude. He bought a TV station when I was there. Huh. Like he bought a TV station and he makes money. Just sticking commercials in, and the commer- the TV's just running for people who don't really have super cable. So you can watch the show, and they put on all of these old things because you can buy them for super cheap, and people watching, and they sell ads, and it's super cheap. I watch it. I- I'm going to tell you. But k- Kung Fu, man, remember the Kung Fu movies, man? Who is your favorite? Mine was Bruce Lee, obviously. Right? But then, well, yeah, well, you know. but then what, remember it was Bruce Lai? <laughs> Everybody like, yeah, like the yeah, fake yeah. Bruce Lai movies. I'm going to tell you, though. The master Killer. Huh, master, that's where the Wu Tang oh, came no. from. That's where the ma- that's where the Wu Tang came from. Wu Tang, I must fight you. Ah, yes, I know. Remember when uh, when Michael Winslow would be like, Ah, welcome to the fight. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> I guess nobody can hear me. <laughs> well, if you can't, if you can, no one can see me. But I'm mouthing. I'm doing. I'm doing sub. I'm doing the morning show in subtitle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay, I did love that. But now it's so hard for me to watch movies with subtitles on Netflix. Like I want to watch Sono Girl, Sono Queen, the African movie, the one about the African spy. It's good. I just, it's like I don't want to read the whole dang go movie. I have to be in a, in a certain mood for it because. You know, when I'm watching a movie, I'll be fooling around, doing other things. you got to actually pay attention. Right. And then the other part is, like, with those movies like that, when they do all the, uh, like, have you seen now on Netflix, you can set the set it so that it can, you can make the audio in English? So they going, <laughs> hello. But not What's up? Movies. One of my favorite movies is uh, Kung Fu Hustle. And I never saw that. No, no, you're right. No, it, no, it has subtitles, but it, it doesn't have. Uh, it's not dub. My favorite part is. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Remember, did you ever play like kung fu when you was a kid and you made all the sounds? Yeah, you did. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Remember, hey, let me, okay, I got a question for y'all. Okay, I know this That's is like a asking. Did you do wrestling? Who? <laughs> okay, you know that what? Was... So, so the, I, I can't dish you. I went to the comic book store, and somehow the the subject became the the mutant ninja turtles. Teenage Mutant and Ninja Turtle sold the books was like man they were badass but when they made them into a cartoon they sissified them <laughs> ah that's they tend to sissify a lot of stuff oh are we allowed to say oh see here we, look Ty don't say that, that type of stuff that has nothing to do with gender Ty or, yes it does yes it does if you say you cannot okay let me ask a question is the word sissy a bad word now is it politically incorrect I don't know. I, hey, obviously, I don't know because I... You just used it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to tell you. I think it is. I think so many things, and I think you should not touch any of those words today because don't forget, the mayor's coming here with oh, the marshes. Right. Yes. Uh, okay, so I can't talk. All right, I, I'm getting the Chinese. He's not... See? It's like, now he over there doing that Kung Fu Fight. He was doing he was Kung Fu Fight. He was like, oh, my God! Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I don't care. I don't know. I won't promote her no way. Nah. It's cool. All right. Let's keep on going. Did you see Oak Park has shelter in place? Yes. You can take that off my screen. I've got an attitude now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oak Park. They're not playing. Oak Park shut, is shut, shut. So, wait a minute. So I'm not sure what that means, but. It means you can't go outside, but do you get to drive? So, That's like martial law, in a sense. You know, what the, you know what Oak Park is really setting up to do, right? Get rid of black people? No, they are setting up. Well, kind of, yes. What they're doing is they're setting up so they can put the National Guard on Austin. So they can stop any other West Siders who want to cross over. From, right. They already got the police patrol, but now they're going to put tanks and military and they are going to wall it off. Because you know, people in Oak, Brooks, Oak Park swear that they are the most liberal people until a black person moves next to them. Oh, man. When I went to the black campaign in Oak Park, they were nice, but they're like. Oh, I can't vote for you this time. They were like, and they told you nicely. Nice and nasty. Nice and nasty. Night. Hey, welcome. But I did tell you, you know, Orleans Parish, which would be like Orleans County, and Jefferson Parish are right next to each other. Jefferson Parish literally put up like a toll booth, and you had to stop and be questioned before you could go into Jefferson Parish. Man. We need to trying to keep us keep y'all subjugated you negroes Basically. all right oh also speaking of that did you see california issued a uh the whole 40 million people in california can't go outside 
<laughs> no, seriously. 40 million. 40 million people. The governor has in, has instituted a stay at home uh, shelter in place order for the whole entire state of California for two weeks. Jeez. I mean, dog, do you know what it's going to be like when people come outside? How do you get anything? Huh? How do you get. I mean, I think they are making Amazon. Well, you can still go to those places. Oh, okay. Right? The gas stations, the grocery you stores. You can't be hanging out, you know, one at a time, two at a time. I'm telling you now, y'all, it's going to be crazy. Did you see, you know, Todd, do you remember Linda Fairstein? Do you remember her? No. Uh, Linda Fairstein was the public attorney, the district attorney, uh, that prosecuted the Central Park Five. Oh. Right? The one, did you watch the movie, When They See Us? I don't know. I've seen, I know I've seen. Okay, some well I'm gonna tell you. It after seems you, like there was a couple of them. I saw something. Well, after you saw Carrie was crying the whole dang go move. She was just, oh my god, I can't believe in the Central Park Five because you thought they were all connected. It wasn't. They was babies. It was everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, she, I, mean, I saw part of it because I, I saw the the older guy really talk about it. Mm-hmm. Who was like an adult? Corey. Yeah, and they were like, we're, we're sending you straight to jail. Right. He was the worst. Um, right. He had the worst story. I mean, he went through everything, and he was mentally challenged by the time it came out um the thing was though she is now suing netflix for the movie because it's ruined her reputation it's she like <laughs> yeah but it's not a documentary it's a it's like a life like it's almost like a life it's a it's a historical movie sort of you know like when they do a biopic pic or something it's like a biopic i thought i saw it and it's not this one isn't a di- documentary this oh, is a they have I'm actors sorry. and everything oh yeah. okay all right. Yeah, uh, that's something like a docudrama. Docudrama. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then how about this one? The NBA shutters its shutters the stadiums, the arenas, um, for in, indefinitely. I get it. Man, uh, they was just talking about yesterday having a basketball charity tournament. Now they talk about like who was going to that though. Like, yeah. <laughs> they was like, yeah, we're going to have a charity. And what, we're going to donate money to the NBA so they can give it to somebody else? How about this? How about I donate my money to the pe- to the people in my neighborhood? Yeah, right. right I'm, not, I'm, I'm just telling you now, I love, like, the March of Dimes and all that stuff. But I do think, as black folks, we need to figure out who are the people that are doing the good work. People like Diane Latiker. And we need to make sure that we support those people. Right, like support the people that are doing the good in our neighborhoods, and let's get it to them directly. Because what happens is we the sexy stuff goes to the big TV and the mayor and all that stuff, and you get your name read on TV and all that good stuff. And meanwhile, then they pass out food. It let's make sure we support our own people that have been having this fight for a long time. All right, y'all. What is that? Why do my Why am I hearing music in my headphones? All right, y'all. It's the top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. We'll be back. It's okay, but well, I mean, but damn, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I didn't watch Hong Kong before. I should have. I, I didn't know it was a black man. Huh? I didn't know it was a black man. I should have. I should have tried to get it some help. I've got more responses to my uh, Corona joke. The only thing I got more responses to is when I put a picture of my dad up. 202 people reacted to my post. What post was it? It says, I asked Siri for directions this morning, and it told me to stay my ass at home. No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it didn't, but it was such a great post. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> She's so proud of you. So like, I, got, I didn't make it up. I stole it, but, I, but <laughs> I'm so proud. I mean, I know the song, but we was way past Hong Kong Fui. We was gone. I'll be like, man, y'all be throwing my timing off. The guy just got back to me today. I sent him texts and emails and phone calls yesterday, and he just texted me back. All right. Quicker than a human eye. Whoops! I really want to start cleaning out my um I want to change the people whose posts I see on Facebook. I feel like I see the same mad motherfuckers every goddamn day. You know there's more posts out there. Yeah, it's just like my feed. It's like I want to get them out of my feed. It's like I'm going to tell you like there's I'm getting to a point where it's like certain names come up in my feed and I'm just like 
Like, are these people you didn't really know when you accepted them, or are there people are trolling you and getting on there? No, it's not. No, trolling. no. He's it's saying like, if you if you have five hundred uh, people, I have five thousand people. But right, you you, you, only, you only see the same twenty names, and the same twenty names. It would be good if the same twenty names were po- like gave me at least one out of the twenty posts was positive. Yeah, it's like all twenty of the twenty is like it's like I sit around and and it's and I'm not and, and so I guess I've been there, sort of, but I feel like there's an evolution, and it feels like people are stopping. So you you got the this the, your personal five thousand limit page? Yeah. Don't you have a fan page? Yep, and that has twelve thousand. So what kind of reaction are you getting over there? Is it mostly on your personal page? No, I mean when I scroll through Facebook, it's uh, not them commenting on. I my, got it. It's, it's what they're posting. It's their seeing. posting, and it's like when I scroll, I mean, yeah. I'm like, really, dog? Like, like, like yeah. straight up, like, dog? Fans, like. And, and you know, you know them, right? Yeah. And you don't really want to unblock because you're, they're actually a friend or acquaintance of you. I mean, right? they have some good things, and you right. want to engage Thank some of the guy. stuff, but you just be like, really, dog? Like, you you are now. It's like I feel like people are sitting around. Will this one work? Will this one work? How many will I get off of this one? Will this one work? Will this one work? One of my friends posted a, a train coming into Chicago yesterday, all filled with Humvees. Yeah, that's all bullshit. Is it? I never trust that, that kind yeah. of yeah. I, I read about that this morning. Well, yeah. I'm saying those, tr- those fuckers transport, that's how they transport yep. the shit across the country. Yep. But I am saying, like, guys, they probably are moving transports because they're trying to build hospitals and all type of shit. Yeah. And and like so if you're seeing it's like I'm looking at I'm I feel like don't get it twisted. I feel like the thing could be not could this could not be good. I really am thinking like they're gonna clean up the homeless. Oh yeah. That like I feel like the homeless people, like you're gonna come back and you're gonna be like, What happened? Cause where are they now? Like, seriously, where are the homeless people? When I was on the street, there's nobody panhandling, so you can't collect any money. And the weather's warmer. And so now, where are they? So I know of two homeless encampments. Um, obviously, you can just go on Lower Wacker, you know. Uh, but along the, the tracks that come into the city, down like through uh, like 35th and Kenzie over there, there's a whole, whole uh, camp, encampment over there. No, it's a bunch of encampments. The my I always take we take food all the time over to Tent City. Like you can pull up on mm-hmm. on Des Plaines. Wait, what? Yeah, I feel like, um, like right now, I don't need no more depressing shit. So, dude, at eight o'clock, the the angle that I pitched on him is to <coughs> be a cautionary tale for all other people to take this serious. That's fine. Okay. Bro, they gotta do a better job here. Where's the wipes? Where's the no, ain't the towels are there. The wife's probably ran out last night. <laughs> they need to buy industrial. Right? They gotta. They gotta act like. Close that door. Everybody's working for the weekend. Everybody's You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host to Hard Stroger A Tot. It is time for the social media question of the day. Don't go, do that. Don't, don't do that again, man. You throw me <laughs> off. You get me nervous. When you can't, no sudden movements these days. You make sudden movements now. Be like, what you? Where you going? 
I'm telling you, you're in the face of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I'm telling you, when I was driving down... You know, I did like Zombieland. I never watched it. I don't watch zombie movies. It was funny because the other day, somebody said something to me like, don't you watch, uh, what is it called, Walking Dead? And I'm like, no, fool. I don't base my life on... like." And people are literally... But I don't watch none of that type of stuff. The closest I got to that was the Game of Thrones and the, and the Ice and the uh, White Walkers. Right? Because I, I don't get... Right. See, I don't you get... That was funny. <laughs> I don't, I don't watch horror movies or none of that stuff. I have like every and why does Contagion keep coming up on my Netflix queue? Right. I'm like, I'm not watching that. Sorry, I'm not watching it because then I'm gonna that be looking at people. Yeah, man, it's the. I think that's the one where you sneeze and the thing and they show it floating, then they show it going to vent and they show you how it's getting you and you be like, Dang, I don't want to know that. Don't nobody look, man. If I'm going, just let me go. Right. Just I want it to be sudden. I want to see it in slow mo. Uh, uh, I want to just <laughs> boom, dang. He was standing right. Let me stop. All right. Test. Time for the social media question of the day. Uh, I don't know if you have seen, but the mayor of New York has told the, the, told the companies there to send their, let, they can only have, 75% of their worker, workforce must stay home, must work from home. I am looking and the city hall is closed. Um, nobody can come in. All of the companies are, are telling people to work from home. I'm waiting on the radio station to tell me work from home. I brought my mic home yesterday. I got my whole setup ready. I'm about to set up a studio. I'm going to have a backdrop. Y'all going to be like, Maze, where are you? I'm going to be like, I'm in the bunker. Mm-hmm. Todd's over there. Todd's going to be in his. And um, he's going to be trying to fight with uh, Hans. He's going to be fighting with Hans and the cat. Hans going to be trying to make them warm cookies. Like, Hans, what are you doing on the back porch? What is that smell? <laughs> <laughs> Hans does like to cook things, but he likes to cook pizza. Uh-huh, because pizza goes, pizza. pizzeria, pizza goes very well with the, you know what pizza goes well with, right? That too. No. <laughs> yeah, like pizza. The munchies, they, I, think, I think I've heard this from you before. They told you, they tell you that if you eat a slice of cheese pizza, this is my cousin told me. Uh-huh. While you got the, before or after, it's like rocket fuel. Never heard that. Yeah, it, it's like that and mangoes too. Mango? Like if you if you eat a mango if you eat a mango and partake, my cousin tells me he said, "Boy, you you said that mango takes you like if you was going to the moon, that mango will put you on Mars." Mm. I was like, "Why well, do you learn these things?" That's what I was. All right, but ask Hans. It's the time of Chicago sixty ninety. You know, um, but I want to ask cause since everybody is being told to work from home. Are you really working from home? Like, no, seriously. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Are you working from home or are you watching Netflix? Like, and what are the rules of working from home? Are you working from home? Like, so when you work from home, are you supposed to have your computer up and you're supposed to be working eight hours until like your regular day and take lunch break and all that stuff? Do you take phone calls? Do you, because, do or do people think they're really on vacation for two weeks? Yeah, man, that's a tough question, especially depending on what you do. My uh, my niece's husband, he works for some kind of computer type thing, and he works from home every once in a while just on the norm, and I've always wondered that too. So what are you doing the whole day? Mm. Uh, but I don't think you have like an eight-hour day. You have something that you have to complete. Well, I think that's that's the way the world is moving towards anyway. I think this whole thing is going to change life even in that space i think work from home is going to be more more is going to become even more i think this forced the hands of a lot of people right a lot of people who weren't trying to make the work from home thing happen because like the millennials think that's part of their job they be like work like i i'm gonna be honest with you Todd. i'm an old school business owner and you know i've had people who will like be my assistant or something they're like i don't have to come to the office to do it and I'd be like, if I'm going to pay you, you do. <laughs> right. Because, quite frankly, you know when you at the... I, I mean, I'm just saying. How many times have you been at home, working from home, or taking a conference call from home and done it on the toilet? And you're trying to say that's wrong because? Because <laughs> you couldn't do it at work. 
could do that at work. I'm saying like. But that's only because the phone line won't reach that far. <laughs> well, see, now you do it on your cell phone. You just drop it on the floor and then you just. Then you got to have a mute and speaker. The problem is when yeah, you. You got to put the mute on the You right got now. it right. Cause got, and then you know the. I hate the phone check. Like, everybody there? Todd, you there? You like. Mm. Yes, I'm here. Click. Right. Then it takes you a minute to scramble to the. So let me ask a question. Are you really working from home? Now, uh, Todd has, the white Todd has a good point too. I was just thinking about this. What, do, are you video conferencing? Do you teleconference? Do you telecommute? And then, because I'm going to tell you. I just, Claire had school yesterday, and it, they did a, I don't know what it was, Skype, uh, Sky type of thing. Uh huh. Probably Zoom. Oh yeah, Zoom. They probably right. Zoom, 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 Zoom. Um, but Todd, I was hey, just thinking, Claire's like, don't walk behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, let me tell you what. I was doing a um, Facebook Live the other day, cooking and commenting, right? And Carrie, Carrie came into the thing. You know, I had my camera shot set up, and she was like, uh, "I hope we don't get any dirty kitchen shots." <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, "Speak for yourself. The kitchen's not dirty. It's just got a lot of groceries right now because we're preparing for the apocalypse, the zombie apocalypse." Exactly. Um, but have you seen your people's house? Like, man, you have a look around somebody's house. Like, did you know you was having a video conference? <laughs> like, do you at least clean out the square? Right, right. Right. Like, I usually look if I do something, I do a shot. And then I, I kind of do like a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side so that in case the camera moves a little bit, you won't get nothing that you ain't supposed to see. Right. But I am asking the social media question of the day. Are you work? Is your company got you working from home or do you still got to go in? And if you are working from home, are you really working from home? Give us a call. 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. Now, I'm going to also tell you as a boss, as a business owner. Like, when people used to try to tell me they was working from home, I'd be like, mm. Then I felt like I had to test it. Then i call, what you doing? Nothing. Working. Okay, cool. Continue. I was like, what you doing? What kind of test is that? What you doing? I'm working. What you working on? Right? And then you'd be like, well, I'm working on. See, I, see, I feel like, I always feel like working from home is cheap. Unless you got like a straight up project. Like if you're a receptionist, you can't work from home. Right? No, you're out. Uh, yeah, yeah they, you say that. No, I hear you saying, yeah, you can. I'm not having the calls routed to your house. I want the calls answered in my office. They call my office, right? I want them calling your crib and you got the kids in the background like, Mama, that maze is funny. Right. You didn't push the mute, and now they got the kids running around in the background. You flushing the toilet, my clients. Now, Todd, what kind of boss were you? Would you, if you were, if you were at the county, would you have sent everybody home by now, except for non-essential workers? Oh yeah, this is a well. For one thing, I, I'd have a, a public health director who would, would kind of give us a what we should do type scenario. But I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone would be, be home by now. You think so? Mm -hmm. But what about the functions of county government? You are, don't you feel like you have to be a strong leader and be in the office and go down with oh, the ship? Well, like I said, there's essentials. Oh, yeah, me. I was, I was, I told you, I'd come to the office on the holiday because I didn't even realize it was a holiday. Like, oh, shoot. I'm the only person here. But there's just things that you have to have people, but for the most part, you know, you wouldn't want everybody running around. Right, because you don't want them hacking on your bread. No more hacking on my... Oh. Oh, spread it like it's, uh, you know, the whole building sick at one point. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. So You're right, because a lot of people do come to work sick. No, they come to work sick because they think they got the Iron Man theory. I used to go to work sick. Right, and it was people who... I, I you, you know, the world's changed though. Back in those days, I go to work sick because I didn't want to use no sick day on being sick. Right, I gotta go sick. I gotta use my sick days to go party. Yeah. Go go now have they, a good time. Now they actually try to catch you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, government is so much different now. Yeah. It's so much different. Um, Todd. So when we come back, we're gonna ask our callers to tell. I want to know who is working from home. Give me a call three one two three seven four eight one three zero. Stop running because y'all ain't y'all working from home. Cause I see y'all watching on Facebook Live right now. That's probably why they're not. That's probably why they're calling in because they're supposed to be working. Yeah, hey, it's right. the time. Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show with May yeah, Jackson working. coming up <laughs> on the Talk of Chicago 1690 WVON. With the Bologna Burger. Probably working on a, her EEO report, which she wouldn't really have to be at the office for. She just needs her file. 
Everybody's working for the weekend. Yeah, there's a there's a Facebook page of screenshots. Wonderful. Some people call it now, but they have a lot of people. And it's just like weird shit. One guy had um, a healthy skin. <laughs> Everybody's working for the weekend. Ah, the good old days. Oh, don't go break in my heart. Men were men and cattle were afraid. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Electric word, life, it means forever. And that's a mighty long time, but I'm here to tell you, there's something else through the afterworld. A world of never-ending happiness. You can always see the sun, day or night. So when that elevator tries to break you down, go crazy. Push the highest number. Dun, 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 dun. I might watch Purple Rain again today. My daughter will go crazy. Because when that movie come on, I'll be up singing, dancing, running around the house. And then they be like, really, could you let them do the movie? Because I'd be like, password isn't it. Password is what? It or what? Boom. Good morning, Angela Kilpatrick. Good morning, Ronald Rulak. What up, Denise Russell? What up, Daryl Wallace? What up, Laverne Smith Bell? What up, Michelle Flagg? What up, Rhonda Spy Payne? What up, Akia? What up, Felicia Simmons Stovall? We're going to get it next time. Next time. He was right there this time. Right there. Right, right there. William Torch is right about that. There are a lot of people who don't, who really not, either don't have uh, computers or they're not really good at it. They're That's why they letting them die in uh, Italy. I'm just telling you, I feel like this is a low-key purge. <laughs> it is. I'm saying, Ty, if there was, if people went to clean up the homeless right now, who would know what happened? That's another one. <laughs> I'm telling you. That reminds me of that movie with Ice-T. Oh, yeah. Work it to the bone, 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 is that work? To the bone. Work it to the bone, 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 bone. Work it to the bone. Work it to the bone, 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 is that work it to the bone, 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 is that work it to the bone, bone, bone. Work to the bone. I only like like five or so. Let's work to the bone. Let's work it to the bone. Let's work. Hold on. <laughs> work it to the bone. Let's work it to the bone. You are tuned into the town of Chicago. <laughs> 1690 AM. I am your host, Maze Jackson. Y'all know I hate house music. But there are like six to ten songs that I like. And that work it to the bone. I just work it to the bone, bone, bone. I just work to the bone. That used to be a jam. Mm. But Todd, I think the whole reason we had this song. You ain't know that song, Todd? No, no. No, no, no. I, yeah. I guess I wasn't dancing as much as I, <laughs> I should have. At that point. You was trying to do the disco hustle, man. Stop it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you was trying to do the kung fu hustle. boogie. You was doing. You know how to do the hustle. I didn't even know the hustle was really a dance. You know how to do it. 
the hustle up I remember. <laughs> I think I know how to do it. I could be wrong, but it was, was that the Roger and Rerun? What was it? The I thumbs up. That one? Is that what that was? I think so, but I am sure we'll we'll get that <laughs> in the process on Facebook to tell us that we are correct. <laughs> All right, y'all. So Sonya's playing that song because, Todd, we want to understand. Um, are you really working from home? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. Uh, the mayor says if you don't feel well, stay home. But apparently, Todd, as I was looking around, as I was looking around yesterday on um, downtown, nobody was at work except me and my lawyer. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, you know, I did drive. I, I, I decided to make a, a, a little tour. Th tour, thank you. So I went down <laughs> Michigan and up Big all West just to see if there was anybody around. And yeah, it, it reminded me of like a you know early Sunday morning where there's just a couple of people walking around. Ah, uh, you know what? I was thinking like I might go dance in the middle of like the expressway or something. Like take a picture standing dead in the middle of the expressway because nobody was coming. I've already crossed an expressway in my life. I'm not. Uh, I crossed I'm an expressway. I crossed <laughs> expressway before. That was fun, actually. Uh, I, I, that was fun at the moment. Yeah. But. I, I, you know what though? Alcohol makes a lot of things. Though. I was too, and alcohol makes a lot of stupid things seem fun until it don't go right. Nah, I wasn't. No, I wasn't drunk. I, I ain't crossing no expressway <laughs> drunk. <laughs> that, was the, that was the. Then you ain't really did nothing. That wasn't no challenge. Crossing the sober is no good. That ain't. You can't say, oh well. Guess what? Okay, wait a minute. Netflix is reducing quality in Europe. That's I think, man. Do y'all understand what the internet is gonna be like? Could I? You know who we gotta make sure does not price gouge us. And I need to send a big, 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 big shout out to Comcast. Let me do that to Comcast Xfinity. I know they've been the subject of a lot of stuff, but did you see Comcast that increased the speeds of internet for everybody, even the low income people that were paying the nine ninety five a month? Oh, really? To ensure that in this time, everybody has yeah, everybody's. Trying to get on at the same time, right? But what's crazy is, you know, well, that just make you know they be playing with your internet speed. I be like, why is my phone going so slow? Oh yeah, and it's like, you know, they say if you pay seventy four dollars extra, you know, you could be fat. Man, I'm gonna tell you something. I did not know that there, like, I did know that there was internet speeds, but then I I paid for the upgrade. Uh huh. And it was like, you know, I used to try to watch Netflix and it'd be like, buffering, buffering, buffering. Mm -hmm. Or like, you get halfway into the movie, it's good. And then it'd be like, buffering, buffering, buffering. Man, you get that that other new kind. So AT&T was offering like straight up, like they said the maximum you could get. And I, we need to talk about this too. They said the maximum you could get in my neighborhood was five. Like a five speed. Uh -huh. Like literally, five. And we were like, and we paid for the upgrade, and they went from two to five. Man, we called Comcast. Comcast was like, five? They was like, that's the highest you can go. Comcast was like, oh, we do 120 for $30. 120 to five? What the what? That's incredible. Yeah, that's an incredible jump. But you know what that is? And then you know what it made me think of, Todd? Yeah. It made me think of my good friend, Mike Lito, who said that when the Black Caucus demanded that, uh, when they did AT&T U-verse, uh -huh. That it was part of the compromise, right? To because AT and T didn't want to expand their full internet service into all of the neighborhoods. So I live on the line, uh -huh. right? Where when when they cut the deal, it was still the hood, right? So I don't get the speed because they haven't done their census to change to know that white people live in my neighborhood now. Right, so right. I can get better oh, internet. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 Mister Jackson. Right, we we have. Oh wait, your neighborhood's changed. So now we gotta get some black people. Oh yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I do think that that was pretty cool. But you know that makes it easier for you to work from home too. You know, in that vein though, when I was the alderman, and, and that was a long time ago because that was two thousand one to five. You was an alderman. <laughs> yeah. Dang man, you done had a lot of. You like a cat too, man. <laughs> Nine lives. Comet literally came over. Angel. With the Angel. Couple. Shout out to Angel. You know I love Angel. Oh, she's great. She is. And she can't be the angel of death too, though. You know she will. <laughs> she like if you don't pay her, she'll help you. But if you if you let me tell you, I love Angel until she look at she. But she'll be like, you be like Angel. Well, once you find out some of the facts, <laughs> right? I'm like, like Angel, help me out, help me, Angel. I need help and comment. She be like, baby, I got you, I got you. Then she start. You start hearing that click, 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 click. 
You ain't paid your bill in six years. <laughs> yeah. What you want me to do with this? Right. <laughs> right. You're so, like, <laughs> just like that. Right. Go ahead. But, uh, she brought Shout out to Angel Perez. In, and they literally said, uh, we are upgrading the facilities in your neighborhood. And we, uh, and we freely admit that we've been screwing you guys since black people have been <laughs> and not doing anything and putting blackouts in your areas so we can keep lights going on in the white areas. I was like, dang. Angel didn't say that. No, the white guys did. The white guys did. Because Angel brought them over there to get it right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm about to say. Now, you know my girls, Angel and Melissa, wouldn't be letting it happen. What your boy say about that? I'm going to stop. Let me stop. This is 2003 or something. That's when he was a big cheese. He should have been like. Rep. Big yeah. cheese state rep. He was a big cheese state rep. He should have been like, I am the state rep of the mighty 8th ward. If y'all, I won't vote on y'all bill if y'all don't give me some blackout stoppage. See how that's that oh, how black. Oh well, no, this, you know that blackout stuff that happened when I was a kid. Okay, I'm just saying, but you know, like that's my point. Like in these you moments, were in by that time. we didn't have blackout. Sorry. Yeah. We had air conditioning and everything. No, no, there would be times where everybody, all the neighbors be standing out front talking to each other, and you know, no lights on. <laughs> and, and oh no, that never happened to me. So the rest of us chasing that, fireflies. See, you know. sh shout out to Mayor Claire. Thank you for it one more time. We never had a blackout in Bolingbrook that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, we did have mosquito bites. Todd, so I, I guess I think mosquito everybody, this is how you know people ain't working from home because they still in the bed, right? They like, shoot. They woke, the alarm went off at 6 o'clock today. People was like, I ain't got to go to work. Yeah. Look, think about this. Do it, So if you work from home, do you get dressed? Do you get dressed if you work from home? <laughs> dressed in what, though? <laughs> uh, that's right. I'm just trying to figure out what do you do. All right, so you social know, on Saturday, I might not get out of bed till like ten, because I'm like, oh my god, I don't have to be up at three. So I, you know, how it is, wake up anyway. But you just don't get up. I can't do that. I cannot. And then when I wake up, it's like I wake up at four o'clock, and then I try to close my eyes, then I go downstairs, and then by the time I get to get through piddling around, Dorothy Tillman is on, and then it's like, damn. I wasn't trying to, you know, I'd be like, I don't want to listen. And then she started talking. And the next thing I'd be getting, hollering at the radio. <laughs> and then everybody's like, bro, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. You don't have to work. I'm like, Dorothy Tillman got me on fire this morning. It's Doug Chicago 1690. We'll be back. I got a different world. I get up at 5 to feed the cat. And then I get back in bed. Did you have underground where you live? or Yes. That's why. Yeah, we had I, underground everything. Yeah, I never had. For 20 years, my power went out once for an hour and a half because they were changing the transformer. Oh, no yeah, I don't think I ever remember the power going out. Like, yeah, I don't ever remember the power going out. Our cable, I remember the green box in our backyard. The cable was mm -hmm. under there. Mm -hmm. um, Everything's underground. Everything. Yeah, so Sonya puts a drink in every room of her house and goes on her own pub crawl. Damn, you know what though? I was thinking maybe That's I got so a I got a robotic drink maker. I think I'm gonna sample my drinks this weekend. Uh, you know, Ro, I heard Ro talking. Have you used it yet? Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? It's really cool. Yeah. Like we got two. I bought Carrie one for Christmas, and she bought me one for Christmas. You, you should and go, she you bought your own pub crawl. She, <laughs> she bought opposite actually when we had a party and it was the coolest thing ever everybody was like damn so you put like one of them the Keurig one chills the drink and everything and then it everything is in the pod so it pours the drink you put it in a pod you don't do nothing you don't gotta buy no other alcohol you push it down and just like a coffee cup it fills up and it makes you a drink and, yeah. it's, and you be like damn and it actually is potent the one that Carrie bought is the one that Carrie bought, you have to fill up uh, flat containers with your favorite alcohol. And then it has strong, regular, light, or right. or, vert, or uh, mocktail. And then you put that bad boy in there, that sucker goes... You can see the month, the alcohol coming out of each one of the tubes. The bubbles come up. Is that one looks like super cool and scientific? The one is the Keurig one is like sexy looking. The the one that Carrie bought me looks. I hate that backdrop. Yeah, it was horrible. The yeah, it was it like 
And it seems like they okay. Let me back up. So the one, the drink. <laughs> the one Carrie has is like you fill up with Jack Daniels, you fill up with gin, you fill and up. You, you, you kind of label it or whatever. And well, it's labeled and it says you put the things, the the containers in each one of the ones. Then you push the drink, you put the pot in. The pot has all the flavors, and, it and then it mixes all the drinks. And so, like, if you want a Long Island iced tea, all of a sudden you see the rum going. Everything's then warm. you see, well, it's not. No, uh. you'll see it'll go, and you'll see the bubbles going down in the gin while it's pouring gin. Then it'll move to vodka, Whoa. and then you'll see the thing will drop, and it'll start pouring vodka, and you'll watch the bubbles going out of the vodka. It's really cool. It's like, it's the bad thing is I don't drink like I used to drink. But what's beautiful is you can get a consistent drink every time, and then, like, carries, it adjusts the level to what you want. Like, if you ask for a strong drink, them motherfuckers gonna hit you. If you, but the Keurig one, you gotta top it off. Did you, did you hear anything about beauty shops? Beauty barbershop. and barbershops closing in 48 hours? I heard that. I, don't I, have I just Googled it, and I don't see anything. But the concept of that and the conversation around that can be quite amusing. <laughs> you know, you're a fan of natural hair. Uh you see, I'm growing. I might not grow. I might until we're out for quarantine. Uh-huh. Oh, germs. They put a warning out. What, about beards? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Danny Swords did that, too. Yeah. He said, I'm the telling all y'all, cut all that because it's meant to catch bacteria and germs. Oh, but then I cut all this off. I don't have no problem with that. Maze is going to come to work like Mr. Clean on Monday. <laughs> no, because then you look like the Raper Man. The Raper Man. Yeah, if you don't have no facial hair. Then you look like the raper man. Just go out and take your eyebrows over there. Fuck. <laughs> no, Tanil, you're not going to get those because they look really cool sitting on our shelf. And it's like we got two and so we have our little parties. We're like, would you like to have your drink? Which would you like to make? This one or this one? Not like we've had any parties. We had one party. One. A fight party. And all my friends, though, was like, damn, this is dope. I saw a rat. In the building yesterday, I see rats in this building all the time. We're right by the river. Yeah. It's yeah. like in there. But I like running across the hall. Inside the building. Yeah. Well, that's all that construction. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. As long as that motherfucker don't run in here. Yeah. I'm the like second that. he runs in here, I'm be broadcasting from home. <laughs> and not because it's a rat; it's just gonna startle you. Be like, well, ah, no, it's because it's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of here! It's because it's a rat. I'm scared of rats, man. I've seen rats fight. Like fight things. I was thinking about what's gonna happen Trying when the, to take out a cat and stuff. I'm <laughs> wondering what's gonna happen when the rats and the skunks get into it in the backyard. That's gonna be a mess. Can a rat and a skunk breed? I don't think so. They're they're rodents. Are skunks rodents? I don't think so. Skunks are rodents. Skunks like a possum. I'm telling you, we're gonna have all type of crazy shit growing around here in a minute. Coyotes gonna be having dog babies. The other story <laughs> is uh, uh, weed places are just doing a killer business right now. Everywhere where it's legal. Huh? What about them? What? Weed places. Just skyrocketing right now. The cost? No. Business. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Bloomberg Business did a story about it. I mean, what you gonna do in the house? From China. <laughs> Look, you hold me. Skunk hold me. me. What you say? Baby. The weasel family. Yeah, I didn't They'll think they were never felt yeah. so I don't think either. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a barbecue grill for you, Tanil. Good night. Smell my piece of spine. Baby, every time I feel in and out my life, in and out, baby, baby. Love never felt so good. Mm-mm. 
You are tuned in to Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom and Sonia Escobar. Sonia back there. What you doing, Sonia? You you having a concert? Uh, work to the bone. Just work it to the bone. Just work it. You know what I am. I do want to see some happy stuff. But Todd, let me ask a question, man. Todd. Yes, sir. You're not listening, man. Let me ask you a question. What you was laughing at? What you was laughing at? You're not listening, man. Todd, I hate when I do that all the time. (laughs) But, Todd, you were laughing when you came back from break. What was so funny? Oh, it was, uh, I was scrolling through Facebook and somebody, I don't know if it was a movie or if this was real. It's probably a movie. Okay. So a guy's got wings and. Okay, it's a movie, clearly. He's got wings. No, not real (laughs) wings. I think it's like a stage production. Okay. And then he, he hits something and he falls down and he's wearing these, well, it might be a woman. It was hard. I couldn't tell. He's wearing Guys, these boots. The world today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The world, the world today. But they fall over and they don't have, like, pants on. It's funny. You had to see it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Todd. It's hard to really <laughs> I guess you had to be there. <laughs> All right. Okay, Todd. So, speaking of had to be there. That's a perfect transition. Speaking of had to be there. You know, I have not had the opportunity to do my full-on election analysis. But when you said what you just said, which I just forgot about not being there. Is that what you said? Like, you got to be there? It seems like, Todd, I was as I was going through the, the election results... First of all, let me do this. Can I point out something to black people? I like it, though. After looking at the elections, the results, Richard Boykin could have been the clerk of the circuit court. No, oh, really, really, where did he fail? Uh, he failed with white people, and he failed in the suburbs. But you know what? I was looking at the margins and the plurality that he got. And had not certain black ele- if the black elected officials across the board would have supported him, he could have been the clerk of the circuit court. That makes sense to me. No, seriously, it's like if you look at the p- numbers wise, if you look at the numbers that he put up, black people. Can I just say something to black people? Black people delivered again for the black candidate. He won all eighteen black wards, hmm. all of them. Now, some without the plurality. Now, what had to happen in these places is that for a black person to win, they need to run up the numbers in black areas. Exactly. And what essentially happened was he didn't get the margins he needed in the city. Right? And Todd, he was winning wards plus 50. Right? Like black wards, he was winning plus 50. Hmm. Right? Except for the ones where the black people kind of stuck with the party. Right. Now, the challenge becomes, Todd, the white folks didn't stick with the party. Why do we stay loyal and they don't? And we feel like we got to stay loyal. This is a reoccurring story. This is this is time beyond uh, since we've been voting. It's always that way. Well, I am starting to believe. Well, not starting to believe. I'm pretty clear looking at the results and comparing the palm cards. That the uh, the committee men do not control their votes. They kind of try to take a guess at where their people are going to be and be in the same space. As compared to saying, 
I've done so much for you, you're going to take my palm card and just vote the way I want to vote. And I think that one of the things that has happened, remember yesterday I was talking about how we got domesticated. I was talking about the fundraisers who couldn't fundraise. Did you know the fun, they, I think somebody tried to give a, a response to that, but never talked about the money they couldn't raise. Sorry, sorry. I had to do that. <laughs> Didn't talk about the fundraising, talked about armchair quarterbacks, but I guess that couldn't be me neither because I'm, you know, in the game. But I'll leave that be. I'll let that be. But Ty, yes. we have, I feel like one of the things that has happened is that most of our elected officials, black elected officials, the way that they believe they win, the, the way that they have learned to win the game is to not have a challenger. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, that's how I learned the game too. Then, right? Is that how Barack Obama uh, won every race except for president yeah eliminating your competition right don't even give them a chance to get their message to the public which is fine if you want to protect the status quo unfortunately for us the status quo is not working and i was going down the list and there's a lot of people that i like right a lot of people that i like but it's a lot of people that when it's time see here's the thing The speaker has made it his business to try and eliminate competition. For black racists, his strategy is make sure they don't have an opponent. Because if I don't have an opponent, then there's nobody to point out the bad votes that you took against your people. Right? Because if you, if, you, if you are the legislator with no competition, there's nobody you have to talk to. There's nobody putting any pressure on you. There's nobody nipping at your heels. There's nobody making you work hard for your constituents. You get to believe in your echo chamber. Also, from the uh, speaker point of view, I also don't have to tell any of my uh, labor leaders to send you any money. Right. I don't, I don't have to. I don't have to spend no money. They spend. They. You know what they do for black candidates. They spend all their time at the Board of Elections eliminating candidates so you can and setting the stage so that they can win in the black neighborhoods. And then they don't have to demand, they don't have to, you as the, the elected official doesn't have to deliver to the black people because the elected official doesn't have to explain anything to black people because there's nothing to compare it to. Well, I, I had a state rep say to me, I can't, you know, on my, by myself I wouldn't be able to raise money. That's because the white guys have been... So here's what I don't understand. How can a black person not... Why is the white votes and the white people up north... How can an anonymous legislator on the north side have $100,000 in their account and they got the same vote as a black person on the south side and they got 20000 in their account? Right. You How know, is that? You know what Emo Jones would say? He'd get a check, he put it in the envelope, he put a note in saying, put some order on this thing. <laughs> make it grow. Yeah, make it grow. Make it grow. And it's like, and so, but you know that the way the system is works is that you make sure that they starve the black candidates out. They want it. What, 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 what do they say in the Mac? Keep them broke, baby. So essentially, black elected officials, particularly at the state level, have a challenge raising funds or don't raise funds. So the speaker makes sure that they don't have a comp competitor. They don't have a competitor, so they don't have to answer why they're, what resources they brought back. They don't have to answer to the people. And so that's how you give $15 million. Could you imagine if, say, a candidate that gave $15 million to a, that, a South Side candidate that gave $15 million to a LGBT organization on the white, on the North Side, so they could open up on the South Side? Mm. Mark? Mark Loveless must be rolling over in his grave. But can you imagine that legislator being able to do that if there was somebody who could bring that up and there was competition? Yeah, you're right. Like, and, and if he felt like he was more concerned about the black people in his neighborhood, he would be like, oh, my God. And I'm not dogging the, ele the legislator. I'm trying to give you a tangible example. So on the south side of Chicago, with all of the challenges that we have, a black legislator gave $15 million to open up an LGBTQ resource center on the south side, but the white guy is managing. Now, my challenge there is, what does the community say? What do the people that live in that district say? We'll never know. 
will never hear because there'll never be a time for them to talk and debate it. Because guess what? There's no challenger. There's no time. To, and if there is a challenger, they're encouraged not to meet or talk. So if I don't give this challenger the opportunity to speak or address these issues, then I'll never got to confront them. Right. So, Todd, I think it's about time that we prepare people to get on the ballot and stay. Like, and stay. And offer the resources and the things that all... I really think that what I want to do is create a a school to make sure everybody stays on the ballot. We're going to talk about it when we come back because we got to stop this no competition thing. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. So, how does a legislator know they're doing a bad job? That there's never never a uh, discussion about the job? Right. Right. There's never discussion about the job, and so you can pull in the 20 people that you help, and they're going to always say, we did it. We helped you. So, again, if the speaker runs your whole shit, guess what? He runs your whole shit. Yeah, your whole. Whole shit. (laughs) Everything. Yeah. I mean, like, it was unfathomable me to hear that staffers would go vote for legislators. Oh, they did that in my, in my day. Think about that, though. Could you imagine all some... The, all the targets. Right. But could you imagine some white kid coming and turning your key? And if all, Imagine every time that a white kid has turned the key for the black person. Imagine the votes that the white people have taken for black people. Could you imagine... Showing that to, to people. We're voting for blah, blah, blah. We're going to give $300 million to these people. White kid walks in 22 years old and turns the key. Yes. And the legislator would be okay with it. Yeah. Seriously. That's reality of not having a competitor. Ever. Like, think about, I was, this is not shade, but think about how many legislators have never had to run against anybody. They got appointed and they never had to run. Probably a ton of Think about how many black legislators got elected to their spots. Elected, not appointed. From the, the get-go. Yep. Probably not very many. And then think about... Well, to be honest, even if they did, in the end... They, they would won. wind up. But, but here's yeah, my thing. Yeah. But think about this. If you have never once ran an election, what happens when the speaker goes? You're going to try to uh, get with some powerful person. Help me! Instead of right now building the infrastructure. Right now. Uh, I would say a powerful I mean I heard a lot of powerful black elected officials Say anybody but Boykin um, I heard the chairman of the black caucus Of the joint black caucus said anybody Well not anybody Said the white boy yeah. Right And it's like We can count on ourselves to fuck us over You don't even need to introduce white people to the situation you could, and you know you can count on the special Negroes always to fuck you over. <laughs> the special Negroes will always fuck you over. <laughs> Who can make the rainbow? Happy as the sun. I, I had this album. I had this. The Candyman can. The Candyman. The Candyman can. The Candyman can. Candy man, can as a lyric so let no world makes the world taste good. Man, can so delicious. You can even eat the dishes. Who can make a round row? Who can make tomorrow? 
Dip it in a dream. The candy man. The candy man. The candy man can. The candy man. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Troy Stroger. Ty! Hey, man, did that have something to do with uh, Willy Wonka? I don't know what it had to do, but I had the album. <laughs> I Let me tell you what. I had the Candyman album when I was a kid. And it was like, you know how you got your own music? Your mama let you get one record. And she played 300 records. And then you could squeeze yours in. And uh, be like, oh, can I play the Candyman? And they'd be like, yeah, you can play the Candyman. But you know, like, my kids, when they ask... I'm like, really, you want to hear who? <laughs> uh, but I, you yeah, know what? one of the Anthony Newley songs. Who is Anthony Newley? Uh, did you ever see Dr. No. Doolittle? The no. first, first Dr. No. Doolittle? No. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Well, Anthony Dooley was a, a songwriter. Was that the one with Gene Wilder? Uh, no, it was Rex Harrison. Okay, no. Yeah. But, yeah, this song was for Willy Wonka. He was a candy man. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I remember the album cover. Because it said Candyman and it had candy on it and all type of stuff. And I used to be like, Mom, can I play my record? Because I, I felt like I was grown. I got it. Oh, no, that's what kids do. Can I play my record? Yeah. And we had one of those record players with that was like a box. And then you pick it up. And then down in there was, was the record player. And it had like the arm. And then I could put my record on top of the arm. And it'd fall down. And then... And then it would fall down, and it would be like, Candyman! And then I would run into the living room. We had, like, this orange couch and this white rug. And I would run in there and be... Yeah, that was a, you know, orange, lime green, and then my other sunburnt one, yellow. My, Not sunburnt, but uh, bright yellow. My other favorite one was, um, my other favorite song was um, the Ronald McDonald song. But I don't think it's the wrong. My auntie, my aunt Brenda called it the the Ronald McDonald song, and she would play it on the piano when she came over. It was dun 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 the lack of inner it, uh, the lack of that was the name of the song it just popped in my head. Oh, the entertainer. Yeah. Okay, uh, we were talking about the Candyman and all type of stuff. But let me tell you, Todd. Um, I have come to the conclusion that we are not going to be able to get our legislators. No, let me not. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me. Let me not say that. I feel like we've got to motivate people. I feel like. There is this, you know, I feel like sort of like sometimes our legislators are like the the millennials right now who don't believe that there is a coronavirus out there, right? Like they don't believe that the world is changing and that things are happening. Can I tell you everywhere I go, white folks are making plans for the future? Like, no, I'm telling you, like, and they ain't even had it at this point. Hmm. They are like, and after the Lipinski loss, Right? After Kim Fox won, right, after seeing what they were not able to do in that Southwest side, it made a lot of people who I know white were, like, very much like, yeah, it's over. Oh, the old world is over. They, they get it. And it's like we're still building backwards. That's what I feel like. It's like we're building a road to the past like those were the good old days for us. When we have in front of us a bright future. Right. But Todd. Those weren't the good old days. They were just the okay days. <laughs> but I guess my question is, Todd, is what does it take to make the black legislators get on our team? Like, not their version of getting on our team, like the speaker's version of, y'all can go help the black people like this. This is the best way you can help your people. Right. But like, listening to our people. Am I, and maybe I'm misguided. Am I missing something? Does not having a challenger make our legislators not responsible to us? I, I think it's. I, uh, I think the, the bigger picture is more that they are beholding to someone else for black votes, though, for to run their operations. So they don't really have an operation. So we got white folks that get transported in to run black neighborhoods. And then our legislators are beholding to the white boys 
even though they got black votes. How does that work? It seems like, um, you know how I talked about a cluster? Let's not add any more clucks to it. Yeah. It's like we keep adding. It. Think about the gravity of this. You live in a neighborhood and a community that you've resided in for at least 20 years. And you got to go get a white boy who don't even like you to come to your neighborhood to tell you what to do to convince the people that you grew up with and live with to vote for you. That's a problem. No, seriously. That is a problem. That That is a problem when a white guy can look at your black neighborhood that you grew up and lived in and you will go to him to for guidance. And then make yourself an indentured servant. And, I, I, and I'm not saying this is everybody. But I feel like, Todd, everybody is domesticated. Could you imagine if everybody who... The most powerful force in our community right now, politically, black in the black community, is SEIU. Mm. Who's been? Who? I mean, they have <laughs> been. I I will say I I, uh, I will say that they have been running candidates and probably for what maybe the last uh, twelve years or so, maybe a little longer, mm -hmm. feeling that they can they can really uh, get their their uh, grips in the government. They, I'm sure they don't do this in the white wards, but I do. I think you said this uh, the other day. SEIU has been going to the wards with the lowest incomes and trying to win candidates through that. Even though, didn't they run a candidate against Christian Mitchell? Was that them? Wait, who ran a candidate against Christian Mitchell? SEIU. Uh, no, I think it was CTU, which oh, okay. is, you know, so they flip back and forth. Yeah, uh huh. But again, we are, and then I would say uh, CTU is the second most powerful force in the black community politically. Yeah. Well, they may be the first, depending on which day. Right? Right. But I guess my question, and are either one of those organizations run by black people? No. So how does it that no matter where we go, white folks run black communities? And, and then the crazy part is, do you realize that right now, they're so powerful now that they are calling elected officials up and saying, hey man, I did some opposition research on you and your friends, and if you don't do what I tell you, we're going to put you on front street. Like, like it's almost like you got a white boy coming down to black neighborhoods threatening black people, and black people be like, okay, sir. <laughs> like, really. I be thinking, like, you really had y'all. Some of the things that these guys come and say to black folks, I'll be like, really, y'all? Y'all let you let them say that? He could say, he felt comfortable. You see how I feel like Todd. Remember, it was a time when, like, maybe you didn't have this, but I think you probably even had it too. When the white guys felt like they might have got just a little bit frisky, and you could give them that look, and they'd be like, "Yeah, I don't think I'm ready for the black. I don't want the black." Because you know, white guys. Oh no, yeah, white people will try to say some stuff. No, nah, you know, they will say some stuff until yeah. you be like, you know, you could get your ass whooped, right? Uh, yeah, right. I mean, they were like straight up. You yeah. take it. You go from zero to a hundred, and then they be like, "Oh wait, no, uh, you you was talking crazy until you realize, I, you know karate. I know crazy. We'll be back after traffic <laughs> and the weather." Live from the WBO yeah, newsroom. Here's the union guys once. Yeah, but it was just an argument. But I was like, "Are you kidding?" Yeah, you just can't let anything happen, though. Yeah, I mean, I am stunned at how some of the most powerful of us act like they aren't powerful. I mean, their actions, you wouldn't know that, that they had some ability to get things done. They don't, it's, it, it's almost as if they're afraid that if they stepped out in the street, a bus would run them over immediately. But what did uh, Frederick Douglass say? I don't remember exactly what he said, but I think it was something like, 
power concedes nothing without demand. You got to fight for what you want. And we don't do enough fighting. You know, I, I take my hat off to um, to Anthony Deal. Even though he got run over by the bus, I think he showed tremendous courage in trying to organize the city council. Because I don't care if you like the mayor or not. As long as the city council continues to let the mayor use committee chairmanships like it's their uh, like it's candy to a baby or maybe breast milk to a baby then they will never be able to truly exercise uh, what they need for their wards because every time she threatens you you got to run you in trouble I was just reading a story about a lady that flew from the East Coast to West Coast, then on to China, knowing she had coronavirus. She's going to get charged and face up to seven years in jail. Wow. <laughs> I'm not surprised, though. Yeah. Uh, because she knew that she was ill and she was using fever reducing medicines. I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad. She, seven years isn't enough. I'm sorry she did it. I don't think she is. No, no, she gets seven years, she will. <laughs> yeah. She, and then if she goes to Rikers Island, she'll be sorry. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. I can miss my steak and shake. I was looking forward to this. Oh, man. <laughs> I should have ate my banana during the break. You got to take the... This was a short break. You got to jump on the long breaks. Yeah, I keep on telling my, my kids they got to make a plan, especially now, but even then, you got to make a plan and it has to make sense for you. There's no use doing stuff that you know is not going to help you in the end. I gave up playing video games when I was like, you know, 19 or something, because I was like, man, this ain't helping me. I'm spending too much time doing this. Hey, um, but then I have to make a plan. Okay, how am I getting out of? How am I getting out of this joint? You know, once you have your plan, you gotta execute it. No use having a plan if you're not gonna actually do anything. <laughs> and he ends up Seriously. doing the same thing over. This and over. is our solution. Pledge. Bleach. I don't give a fuck if it's antibacterial. Get some shit that's bleach. Get something that like that's that's our. They don't even say nothing about nothing. <laughs> like that's our protection. That's probably all they can find at that point. Yep. So then go your ass and go make some bleach water. Get some alcohol spray. Do something. Don't just be like, well, that's the all. That's why I carry my own alcohol spray. <laughs> I didn't take the the hand sanitizer bottle that Janine made. No, what's the people's lobby, Valfrey? I'm gonna start talking about these white boys that be coming into the black neighborhood trying to tell us what's up. I'm tired of all of it. I'm tired of them on the S. I'm tired of all the patriarchal white boys coming to the black neighborhood telling us how they going to save us or what they going to do for us. Yes. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm tired of that. 
And it's like, no, I, I don't care if you're liberal. I want you running, my right, my right. Life. I just get so tired of people speaking for black folks who can't. You don't get me started. I'm going to let that go. Watch. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. Ty, you know, I was thinking, the only time a black person really has a challenge in the black community is when the white folks decide it's time for you to go. <laughs> no, seriously, think that's, about it. The white folks, statement. when we have a real challenge, the only time a legislator has a real challenge in the black community is when the white folks decide that it's time for you to go. And they stop giving you resources. And they stop giving you resources. They start cutting you off and then they go find... And they give resources to, to your opponent. Right. They find another black person again. We've we seen it. Yeah. And tell let me tell you something. Ask, your, ask how many people who have run for state rep in the last 10 years, state senator, have had a competitor. And then ask what happened to the competitor? Ask the people who ran. Who was the guy who showed up, knocked on their door, and said, you really don't want to do this? Why is a white guy telling a black person in a black neighborhood why they shouldn't? And why do the black people depend on the white guy to do it? Right? Because you know Mike Casper come tell you, hey, you, you really don't want to do this. You don't want to do it. And then what they'll do is, what they'll do is they'll, they'll stretch you out. You know, he'll make you do work and all that stuff. Or if it'll be, like, that's on the speaker side. Like, we are, we are, in my estimation, the playthings of both the speaker and the unions, mm -hmm. right? We are pawns and rooks to be moved around the chessboard at the need for the need of them. And I almost feel like the domestic, because we're domesticated, we're comfortable with that. Because who wants to go out and hunt? Man, I could get my food put in a bowl. But you know, you could get a bit... You could, If you go hunt, you might get an elephant. Mm -hmm. But you know, cat food, you know, that just show up in the back. You just rattle the box. When, when you rattle the box, what's your cat do when you rattle the box? Well, no. The <laughs> cat, no, the cat comes to me and he says, hey, Todd, it's, it's 6 o'clock. Feed me. And I, and I say... Claire! <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns and he walks towards Claire's room because he knows that, okay, that means that Claire's going to feed you. See? Yeah. All right, let me go to the phone lines. Let, so oh. I'm the speaker in this. You're the speaker? <laughs> oh, so you, control, so you control the cats. No, I control the people who feed the cats. Ah, okay, okay. Right, well, that's that's basically it. All right, let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you're on Talk Chicago, 1690. Yeah, good morning, guys. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. All right, listen, let me just say this right quick. Until we get a political apparatus set up in the black community as we did in the 90s with what we had in inner city studies, we put our personal differences aside and we came together under one common cause. That's what we did. It worked. And they knew it worked. The candidates knew it worked. That's why they would show up before our committee for the screening piece when they got ready to run. Now, what I'm saying to you today, that's no secret about SEIU. Clem Balanoff, Chewy Garcia, and that whole group 
have been infiltrating the black community for a long time. Let's tell it like it is. Then we keep giving too much credit for the speaker. The speaker is powerful in his ward, uh-huh. but he's powerful in the black wards because uh-huh. the black legislators don't run anything. He he that the speaker's precinct captains work for all these black legislators. What do you think about that? What captains do they have? They don't have any captains. And y'all, if I hear people keep saying, oh, I don't mess with machines. You better get you a damn machine if you want to win. I sure agree, Brother Hall. I sure agree. Yeah, yeah. They, have a good day, man. Thanks, right. Brother Hall, for some perspective. It's like, they be like, say no to the machine. Let me tell you, when it was the machine, at least you had a say. Let me go to Anthony. Uh-oh. Uh, Anthony, where you been, man? Where you been? been? You know what? I've been trying to wean myself off because I get kind of caught up with some of the topics we're going into. Wait a minute. You're trying to wean yourself off? Come on, man. man. You got to get in. You got to mix it up. Anthony, you always have some really good insights and comments. You can't be weaning yourself off. Come on, man. Okay. Okay. First of all, one of the fondest memories I have is when my father took me by the hand down to the polling place back in the 60s, Okay. I mean, I was a little kid, but this was a priority to him. And he showed me that this is what you do. You know, he would take me places all the time. And that was one of the places he took me. And, you know, and, and because of that, I became politically astute. All right? I knew who the alderman was for Doliac. You know what I'm saying? I knew who, you know, the the, the, uh, the committeemen were and stuff like that. And, and, and this is something you have to be learned. You have to be taught, you know? Uh, I don't know if people are taking the time to show their kids that this is what we do. Nowadays, kids are jumping up and, and, and following people like it's a cult following or stuff. And still don't show up to vote. And then, thank you. <laughs> they be talking about Bernie Sanders and, and I'm going to burn the world down and then it's time to vote. They was like, election? Yeah, yeah. right. And the, fun, the funny thing about it, man, is anybody that has to run for a uh, countywide or statewide office have to come to the black community because they know they're not going to win nothing downstate. Nope. Right. All right. And they ain't going to win nothing out in the collar counties and in the, in, in the Cook County and stuff like that out on the outskirts. So they had to come into the city to get their vote. And we just don't make any demands of the people. Let's look at, let's look at our congressmen. Our, 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 our congressmen. This, this brother here, man, been in office 30 years. 20, I thought I Googled it, it said 20 years, but on the radio <laughs> yesterday it said it's 30 years. <laughs> and he runs every two years, and most of the time he runs unopposed. Runs off of re- name recognition. No, he runs, let me tell you something, Anthony. He doesn't run unopposed. There's always someone that jumps in, but the fact of the matter is, even when Barack jumped in, it's like there's a core constituency that is never moving, that is you know, I call it anchored in concrete. Anchored in concrete. Running run it off of name recognition. Right. <laughs> okay, but I mean, what, what does he bring back to the community? See, Anthony, can I tell you what I think we have been tricked into? I think we've been tricked into the fact that we're not supposed to make demands. I think our elected officials have put us in a position where if we make a demand, it's almost like they're offended. Like, they come back and say, this is what we got you, if they got you, as compared to saying, what do you want and what do you need? Um, And I just think in this case, our elected officials have gotten domesticated. And so, if they ain't got to fight in their neighborhood to get out their neighborhood, then they really ain't going to fight when they get in Springfield. Right? Right? If you, you know what I'm saying? Like I was talking to my friend Roland the other day and Roland said, and Roland was like a tough guy in college. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was tough. But, I, and I, you know, like people, if Roland looked at you and like he wanted some of you to fight, mm-hmm. everybody was going the other way. <laughs> he grew up in Robert Taylor, et cetera. And then one day I was, I, actually I was talking on Facebook this week and I said something about bullies or whatever. And he was like, man, I used to get my butt kicked all the time. And my, my sense of fight that you saw when U of I was, when I said I'm not going to get my butt kicked, I had to fight going to Dunbar and fight leaving Dunbar. And all in between, and I had brothers, and we were Muslims, and so we had to fight all the time. So I was prepared for defense and offense when I came down to U of I. And when you saw me, you got the battle tested, ready to go rolling. 
Mm-hmm. Most of our guys have not had a fight and they don't want to fight. As a matter of fact, they're scared to fight because until you take that first punch and know you can withstand it and it ain't going to kill you, you still scared of that first punch. And so that is the same way that one person goes into a bank with a six shooter and makes 600 people lay down. Scared of the first bullet. Now nobody wants to take it, but somebody got to stand up. Stop Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. Take a moment, share the broadcast. So how so should should they be primary? So think about this. I've always been taught, Todd, that a primary is a bad thing. Right? You remember how you was telling me the other day yeah, you were a primary. The elected official don't. No. But if if you have a primary, then you gotta deliver. You gotta be thinking this mug could come back after me in two more years. Right? So in the 10th district, there was a guy who was running, not Omar, mm -hmm. and he was like, I'm going to beat him. I was like, you ain't going to beat him. But he was like, I'm going to beat him. But damn, now I'm going to have to worry about running against you in two years. Right? Right. If you, and if you got that in the back of your mind, then you're always thinking, what can I bring home? What can I get? What can, because when you, when you have necessity, like I always feel like, you know how, the, it's like the Vikings, you burn the boat. Now you got to win. Now you got to win. And so you go to Springfield and be like, I, I really can't come back here without bringing some shit back to the ward or to the committee or to the thing. And it's like... You want a primary opponent so you can beat the shit out of them and then nobody will run, out, run against you again. And that is what gets us into complacency. Because, again, if, you beat this, if you're a domesticated cat and you beat the shit out of an alley cat, you're going to say it's good to be domesticated. <laughs> right? So I feel you, and that's the same thing. It's like you want somebody that's going to beat the shit out of their primary and bring home the bacon. But I don't care who wins. I just want you to bring home the bacon. Right, but... But, you know, part of the problem is, is, is not the candidates themselves. It's the community. The community doesn't demand. They don't work with. I say it all the time. People act like this is a spectator sport. You won. Hey, I'm going home. I'll, you know, I'll no, see you I, again in a couple of years. It's funny. So I don't think of it as a spectator sport. but of I you don't. Well, but I think, here's what I think. I think the basics, I don't think I have, to, I think if I got something I want specifically, then I need to come to you. Now, I'm going to take care of my block. I'm going to clean up my yard. I'm going to, me and my neighbor's going to do that. But if we got a hole in the street, we're going to come to you. If we got things that are, but at that point, there's a certain point to me where you got to say every year, this is what my legislative agenda is for my district. And I'm going to bring back, these are the bills I'm trying to pass because here's how it's going to impact my district. Period. Not, here's the bills that the fucking lobbyists brought me. Here's the bills that people say is going to be good for your community. But here is my legislative agenda for the 10th district, 9th district, the blah, blah, blah. And I'm going down there and I put in three bills that address this, 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 and this. The way it works now is you go down, you got some cool ideas that you think are going to get you a mail or get you some press that you could put in mail and you could stand up and rail. But you ain't really saying I, I, the biggest the biggest South Side acquisition in the last five years was that 15 million dollars. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. So 15 million dollars and the one big win we get goes to the LGBTQ community. A small community inside our community. Right. And it ain't even our black LGBTQ community. Because you gave it to Howard Brown to come over and say, I'll show you how to deal with your niggas. Right boom, 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 boom. You are tuned in to Chicago, to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. Ty, I really want... You know, people are always in front of the music characters. Yes. And, it, and then as soon as we get ahead of it, then the white folks come back, and then y'all give it to Eminem and say he the greatest rapper ever. Well, that's because white people 
refuse to listen to a certain portion of the population who are called African Americans. No, they love to look and listen. They just oh, no, don't want you come in their kitchen. They, well, you go in their kitchen, not their house. No, there was a, a period where they wouldn't listen to our songs. As a matter of fact, Ray Charles did an interview with Bob Costas, and he talks about, and Bob Costas asked him about Elvis, and he was like, oh, man. He was like, Elvis was nothing new. He just took oh, black people's stuff, and white people liked it because he was white. And the same things happened. Like, you know, you know, I, you know, I, I'm a Bee Gees guy, but I realized they did so well because they were white and people could relate to them. Singing and they disco. Relate to some of the black artists who were doing disco. Right, and they had white John Travolta being the star. Like you know, like like white people could dance. They made a movie like white people could really dance. Yes, right, exactly. I, I'm with you. I still haven't seen Staying Alive. Uh, I've seen it in bits and pieces. Staying Alive. And I haven't seen. Oh, Grisha. Staying Alive. Oh, the second one. Oh, Saturday Night Live either. Oh. I haven't seen Saturday Night Live either. Yeah. But you know, I you know what else I haven't seen. Um. No. Dang, I just forgot. But I didn't see that. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, you I did was, see the sting, though, didn't you? I kind of saw the sting with Paul Newman and, uh, and Robert, Robert Redford. Redford. Yep. Yeah. I was trying to catch Robert Redford when I was at, uh, oh, Sundance. at Sundance. He wasn't out, though. Yeah. A little old. Uh, let's go to the phone lines because we were talking about do we need to start primarying? Do, see, Todd, you, you don't think that our elected officials need a primary? No, I'm not saying that. I, I was talking from the candidates. Uh, right, because you're talking. Candidate. But as a cons- yeah. as a citizen, do we need to start trying to help more people get on the ballot um, and stay on the ballot? You know, that's not my 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 thought. Is no, we need to once somebody is elected, we need to actually pay attention, uh, give them money, give them ideas. And stand behind them because that's actually what makes them powerful. Shout out to Cam Buckner, who did exactly that. House Bill 4865, right? I'm going to tell you, there's a new crop of legislators that are down there, Todd. It's a new crop of legislators that are in Springfield that are black, that are not necessarily of the go-along, get-along ilk. However, the challenge is, because can I tell you something? And it's really crazy. They were going to block the cannabis thing. Because they felt like it wasn't enough participation. Mm -hmm. They was like, I hear y'all on the expungements, but we all lawyers and we talking about where's the money. Right. But you know what it is about about politics that I think most people, uh, is you need to work in a group. And you have to realize that every once in a while you will lose a battle. But your strength is that you are still a group. So just because you lost, that doesn't mean Mays carried the bill, so we're going to let them pick Mays off next election because, like, oh, we didn't like what Mays said. No, we're going to make sure you win and you can fight again. That's not how it works. They, <laughs> they be I'm like, about what, what, what it, it should, should be. be. Right. right. You talking about the world as you would like it to be. I'm talking yeah. about the world. Well, the way it works now is you propose something they don't like, you do something they don't like, they go tell the black folks, go kill him. The white boys call you in the office and say, hey, Joe. Your boy over here working too hard for black folks. Maybe. Kill him. Take this six shooter. Yes. <laughs> take this six shooter. Or look, take this mailer, right? <laughs> right, right? Take this police record and let's blow it up. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Vincent. Vincent, you're on top of Chicago 16. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning, Vincent. How are you, my brother? All right. When I went to the polls the other day and voted for... Uh, uh, Boykin? Yeah, not Boykin. I did vote for Boykin, and when I saw him at an event at a uh, Ford dealership that one of you that sponsors your show, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, Boykin had this uh, white girl with him as his assistant at that event. And that, I mean, that just it was a little strange to me, but I did vote for him anyway. And Willie Wilson's name was not on the ballot running against Durbin. Because and there was not even a place for a sign-in uh, for him. So let me just tell you, Vincent, uh, Willie Wilson is running as an independent, so he will show up on the general election ballot. He hasn't even, oh. he haven't even turned in his signatures yet. They're right. not due until June, right? So you'll see okay. him on the final ballot. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you. Unfortunately for the Republicans, they don't have a candidate running for Senate. Because I'm going to tell you, Willie Wilson in the race could really do Dick Durbin some damage. That's what I'm Like, if, if there was a Republican candidate and Willie Wilson pulled the black votes, because, again, Dick Durbin recounts on black votes to win, 
right? He just counted on there not being a challenger. So y'all Negroes ain't got no choice but to vote for him, even though he ain't never did nothing for you, right? Ask him. Mm -hmm. I asked him in person. He was like, he was like, I have the second largest budget and I spend the most money. And I asked him, I raised my hand. You know me. How much did you spend with black people? Oh, you got to talk to somebody else about that. And all the black people in the room was like, <laughs> I'm like, I was talking for y'all, not me. I ain't rich. Y'all are. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all. But okay, let's go to Mike. Mike, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Yes, good morning, Maze and Todd. Good morning, good morning Mike. Um, I think uh, looking at history for any people getting anything in a political climate is when the leaders are want to maintain or they want to advance and go up. And there has been a time in the past stating that there was going to be free Wi-Fi here in the city of Chicago, even uh, mapping out the directions, all of this type, all of this stuff. There's been talk about our governor, how he's been acting presidential, and I believe that he has been acting that way. So I would like to see the people that have interests and concerns in about uh, this free Wi-Fi and online presence for all the people that's, be, that's supposed to be working from home and all the black students that don't even have computers or Wi-Fi to put the pressure on the governor to ask him, hey, what about us getting free Wi-Fi in this whole state? I think that would set a tremendous precedent in this United States and especially for him that would like to be president. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, i tell you this, man. I just think right now we have got to really realign ourselves and really start to think about it. Like, I love, uh, I, I got great relationships with a lot of our incumbents and sitting legislators, but I think right now I was going through the list and I was thinking, like, how many of them are more loyal to the party than to black people or to their community? Like, if the choice came down to what the speaker said and what's good for black people, how many would go with black people? Well, you know, uh, Shaw, Alderman Shaw, lost to uh, Percy Hutchison, I believe it was. Um, and he he had backed Jane Byrne. Who? Shaw. Mm -hmm. And he lost the election. And basically he said he will never be out black again. <laughs> 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 he realized that his lot was always to be with the people who were who brought him to the table. Exactly. And I think sometimes people think that the speaker and everybody else brought him to the table, which in some cases, a lot of cases they have because they promoted him. Right. But to stay at the table, they just keep you uh, un no competition and you just stay. Hey, I'll stop Chicago. When we come back, uh, we are going to be talking about the mayoral address to Chicago plus the governor. We'll be back. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 16 night. <sighs> I have decided not to eat that coffee roll here. That's a tough thing bringing food back home if you don't bring it up for everybody. But eat now, it's expensive. You know, you know what, Maze? I need to work hard. Maybe we can find a, a movie we'll produce and, and make 40 times as much as we spend. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> I just was looking through things and I looked at Goldfinger and the Goldfinger budget, and we're talking 1964, was three million dollars. You know how much they made? A hundred and twenty-five million. That's like being a billionaire. <laughs> Back in 1964. Shit. Holy moly.
going to get crazy in the house. Everybody having to stay in the house. I think we're going to take a, a walk around for exercise. Hey, I wonder if I'm on. No use talking to, to myself. Let me go back and look. Man, oh man. Ugh, look at Sony looking down. Uh, looking deep. <laughs> yeah, dog. I don't know if I'm, how deep I want to get back involved in politics. I wouldn't mind helping somebody. The advice. How to make this work for them. <coughs> Try to help people, help them. That's the kind of stuff. We got some. I agree. Maze is right. There are some people out there who have the spirit. But, man, you got to feel like you are not vulnerable every time you stand up. A lot of these people, that's all they really need is they, they need to know that you are behind them. And then they can do more things. Like I always say, unless you piss off the guy at the top every once in a while, they're not going to respect you. You're just a, another uh, piece on the, the chessboard that they're going to move occasionally. You need to show you are strong in your space. And then every once in a while you gotta be like, no, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm talking about that should happen in every every space. Because the speaker, the mayor, the Senate president, they know they they have things at their disposal that the normal legislator doesn't, and you know it too. The only thing you've got on your side is that you are coming back. And they're going to have to talk to you again. But when Tate Phillips was the Senate president, and he was a, a racist senator from DuPage, four young senators got together and they said, we want this. And he gave it to them. Their caucus would actually vote, and he followed whatever their dictates were. increased workloads. Visit accountemps.com WVON Traffic and Weather Now no delays right now on the inbound Dan Ryan. On the outbound Dan Ryan, you're looking at stop and go traffic between 31st and 43rd Street due to an earlier rollover accident. Tuskegee, Airman Memorial, Bishop Ford, and the Stevenson, no delays on either side. If you're traveling the Eisenhower, expect a 28 minute ride both ways. Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, you're still looking at a 20 minute commute on both sides. It is 49 degrees, breezy and colder today with highs in the low 40s. Tonight, down to 26. That's traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson. It's 8.06 on 1690 AM WVON. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Dave uh, Jackson on the talk of Chicago. 1690 WVON. Ruth wants to know, would we carry a... Uh, just remind me. Sunday.
Okay. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But hey, Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. You know, Fridays, I tend to be a little bit more upbeat. But I want to take a moment. Sonia, why don't you kill the music? I want complete silence, and I want to say a name. Patricia Frierson. Let me say it again for you. Patricia Frierson. She was the first coronavirus death in the area. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When the virus first hit and people were talking, we were all making jokes and laughing and talking about how it wasn't going to, we thought we were immune to it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'll take it a step further. I know a lot of black folks was talking about, man, I got melanin and my melanin will protect me. Well, I want to let the WVON listening audience know that not only was Patricia Frierson the first coronavirus related death in our area she was also a black woman she's a black woman from the Auburn Gresham area that's that's our neighborhood mm -hmm. that's our community and as I think about what is happening right now I think about what this coronavirus could mean to our community, to our families. And so here to talk to us about that and the experience is Mr. Tony Frierson. He is Patricia's brother, uh, who was the first coronavirus-related uh, death in the Chicago area. She was from Auburn Gresham. Tony, uh, First of all, let me offer my sincerest condolences as Todd and I welcome you to the WVON Morning Show. How are you today? Uh, I'm surviving. Uh, thank you so much for your um, kind words. Um, very difficult time for me and my family right now. I can imagine. And so I, this is a difficult um, interview, but I think, Tony, that it is so important that we hear from you because you know I, 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 I was talking to my daughter yesterday she's 20 she thinks she's invincible mm -hmm. uh, but I was also talking to 40 year old and 50 year old black people who thought they were invincible who think they're invincible right now Tony talk to me about what happened and give me some background and and, and tell me uh, first of all tell us tell us a little bit about your sister and tell us like the memories that you have of her what kind of person well, she was? Well, um, my sister Patricia was just, I mean, everyone had their family members. You know, you, we love our family members. And, and just to be in, but just genuine about it, she was just such a loving person, such a God-fearing person. I mean, she had God first in her life. She loved her family. Uh, she had overcome so many obstacles with her health uh, to become a nurse. 
I mean, even her her initial giving in life was that she was, my parents sent her to live with my grand, grandmother when my grandfather passed. It wasn't a matter that they didn't want her. We loved her so much. They sacrificed for my grandmother, and they chose Pat to go do this. And what a person that they sent to do this. As my as Pat grew up in Arkansas, as you might have read in articles or things like that that's been out there, she grew up in Arkansas with my grandmother and at the, and went on to become a nurse. And in becoming a nurse was able to then take care of my grandmother as my grandmother fell ill and obviously taking care of others. But And from there, uh, continuing to do things uh, in the nursing field, and um, again, all about the fact that she was such a loving person. This is just a perfect career for her, actually, as it turns out, because she was she was just awesome at it. And even at this point, when at the point of her disabilities later on in life, she's our fam. She was our family nurse, the person we call if something was coming up. Well, what about this, Pat? What about that? But more to the point, again, she's just such a God fearing person and so so loving and so kind. Now, Tony, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, that's good. Tony, tell me, do we know how she contracted coronavirus and did she have underlying conditions that impacted it? Absolutely. She had an underlying condition that impacted She did have some physical uh, issues, but mainly it was the it's asthma. Well, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Black people, asthma. Asthma, 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 which is prevalent in our community. Go ahead, my brother. Actually, that, uh, that is what made me become more serious because I was thinking my son, he has asthma, and I know that he, his lung capacity isn't the same as, as other people. That's so I was like, well, I've got to be more careful now. So she had an underlying condition of asthma. Now, was, now was she sick already, Tony? And then this befell her while she was sick or did she contract it and it exacerbated what happened so there's no i don't know really know where my sister contracted the virus but um <clears throat> she would have asthma asthma attack spells you know things like that and these are things we were used to used to her having mm -hmm. and as a nurse she had all the medications you know you that you take uh, as an asthmatic, uh, when things might get tough for you as far as breathing. But the fact is, anything that you have that, that, uh, compromises your respiratory system to begin with, um, I'm not a doctor, but it just seems common sense. Anything that under, that, that undermines your respiratory system, even before vi the virus attacks, is going to make it, is going to make it worse for you. And this is, was the case with her. She was not, she had probably been going through, going through some issues with her asthma, but that was normal, and she would normally work her way through that. And sometimes that would require hospitalization, and in her case, that's exactly what happened. She was experiencing trouble breathing and going through her regular asthma treatment regime, regime breathing treatments, um, prednisone, all these kind of things. Wow. And at some point in time, she... Do it and, and that's typical. No, I'm clear. You know, My daughter know, takes I'm breathing good. treatments and prednisone and all of those different things. And we have even a breathing machine that she has to right. use where they put on a mask and you pour the prednisone in it. And, and so, so I, I think I really want, because I feel like this isn't uncommon in our community. It's not. And I think people got to understand these type of things. Go ahead, Tony. And that's exactly what she was doing because that's the routine when she'd have these couple times a year, normally during the year you have this going, but then a couple times it would get severe and you, she would have to go to the hospital. It was almost our routine. Okay, so now we're going to take you to the hospital and they're going to basically, at that point, rebalance her, as I called it. I just a term I come up with. And she come out as good as new. And that's what happened last thir Thursday of uh, the 12th. Uh, she went to urgent care because she had exhausted her efforts as far as bringing herself back to balance. And uh, we're just thinking the process is going to do what it normally do, does. But in this case, somehow or another, she had contracted the virus, and it was exacerbating the situation at that time. And how... And from, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. 
how long after you found out how long after she went to the hospital did it take for the disease to take effect and and essentially take her life she went into the hospital on thursday march the 12th uh she actually just went to urgent care and we were anticipating they may keep her they may not keep her again dealing with asthma and um she was red flagged because obviously because she's a high risk case with asthma and from there they diagnosed that she had some levels of pneumonia um by and then they did test her for the virus because she's high risk uh by early sunday morning we received a diagnosis that she was that the virus she was infected with the virus she was positive for the virus and from there they're just basically fighting at that point now uh, to stabilize her breathing again, ultimately moving her to a ventilator, which she never was able to come off of. And she passed on Monday Monday evening. So from Thursday when she went in, and she had had challenges before that, but Thursday she went in, and by Monday she was no longer with us. Tony, right. if you could, first of all, my sincerest condolences to your family on the loss. Thank you. If you all could, t if you could tell people right now what they could do or what you would advise them to do, knowing what you saw, what would you tell them? Would you would you agree with the quarant not the quarantine, but staying away and the social distancing and all of those things? And is there anything that you think could have been done differently? Um, I'm not going to doubt the, doubt the science out there. I'm not a scientist for it. Uh, obviously, the virus gets picked up somehow or another. Uh, I know they're saying that it's not airborne, and I'm not going to doubt that. Um, but surface-wise, obviously, they've spoken about that. I, um, my own theories, again, not being a doctor or not being a scientist on this matter, the idea behind wearing masks is probably to put, more so is we touch our faces all the time. Ooh, I've been so touching some, it all day. So if there's some, I'm sorry. So if there's some surfaces, you know, again, we we're not aware, we don't know where she picked up where the virus was was picked up from. But in general, they talk about touching surfaces and then bringing your hands to the mouth. If anything, what a mask will do is that okay, maybe it'll stop you from touching your mouth or touching your nose or bringing things to your eyes, as we often do and we don't think about it. It's just sort of like what we do. So that might be greatest advice I can give to you but in in this case again my sister did have underlying causes but still not knowing where the virus was picked up but here's the major thing is that the symptoms her symptoms from the asthma were similar to the symptoms for the coronavirus but we're just living our lives because we're thinking okay she's having some asthma issues and we're we're my family was around her just like always her house her apartment was a central location for everyone to come in. And every day, mm. sisters and nieces and nephews and great nieces come to the house, stopping by the house, and it's just what we did. It's, that's the love we have for the family, and people just come around. And we're just living life. Did you take it and seriously? Then, did you, when, when all the warnings were happening, did the family take it seriously? Honestly. We've never... We've never We've never thought about the virus in the sense of uh, that it wasn't happening. That's never been the case. All I'm saying is, is that what Pat was going through was something we were typically that we've seen before, and we were treating it like that. There's no, we don't hide from her because she had virus because she had asthma. So we're just there. And even if we had known she had the virus at that time, well, we certainly would have taken more precautions. But we still would have been trying to take care of her as best we could, mm. and that's just it. You're just sort of living life. If you don't, it's not like we knew she had the virus, and if we knew she had it, it was like, okay, well, we've got to treat things a little bit differently. But it was just life, life happening. Like I'm talking to you on the radio right now, and we kept doing what we normally do: having family birthday celebrations, mm. stopping over at the house picking up some fish, eating it, and talking and going through things and laughing and loving on each other. And unfortunately, what has happened is that um, due to that contact and not knowing she did have the virus, 
um, other family members are being affected right now too. Have you been, been tested? tested? Have other family members been tested and contracted the virus? Other family members have been tested. We do not uh, own a couple of them, but that was not that was because of um, situations that they ran into. And once they once they got to the hospital, they were tested. It wasn't that because Pat had been diagnosed and everybody started getting tested. This this basically being assumed that we are all infected because we were around her at some point in time. So are you that's now? The way all, that, oh, go ahead, sorry. That's the way the um, the public health officials are looking at it right now. And so we're basically in our own self quarantines. Wow. Um, you know what, Tony? I, let let me say because I we're on Facebook Live and people are pouring out their uh, their condolences to you and your family. Um, so Tony, first of all, let me tell you how not first of all, but let me tell you how grateful we are that you were able to come on and talk to us today. I think it is so important, and I, there's so much information misinformation and it is important that our community take this situation seriously um because like they say and i don't mean no pun intended but when america catches a cold the black community catches the flu and so black folks i want you to listen to this story because i tell you there is no calvary there is no calvary and understanding that there is no Calvary, we, we have to love and protect each other from each other in this situation. So when they ask you to stay your tail at home, stay your tail at home. But at the same time, the challenge becomes, even in this quarantine, how do you manage your family relationships? How do the people that go outside and come back in, could they potentially? This is something that we've never seen before. And so it's so important that we take it seriously. Tony, if you could close and tell people anything that you wanted to tell them, what would you tell them? Um, this, this situation we're going through, I mean, we're not unique as far as losing a sister, but we're unique in losing a sister in this fashion. Um, we love each other so much and it's just been a heartbreak for us and that this is the first family the first sister that we've lost my brother passed years ago but as far as with this virus i just tell people it's real i mean the, the numbers say that 90 something percent do fine you know you may go through this and have a flu and you, you know you you need to self-quarantine you need to do the sanitization things that you can but it's just a virus that's out there you can try to be as careful as you can. And what I would say is you need to, everyone needs to stay prayed up about things. Uh, continue to ask God for his covering because that's what Pat was doing. Uh, even though sh she's gone from us, that's that's a God peace that, that she must have received. But for us left behind, you can take all take the precautions that are out there concerning the virus. Do all you can. Make sure you're prayed up on these things. And from there, continue to love on each other because that's all you have. And that's what we're doing right now. We're, the isolation is terrible right now because I haven't seen any of my sisters or brothers, although we talked every day. But this isolation due to the, due to the virus at this time and also it's, it's sort of robbing us of our, our time to mourn together. Uh, so you want to just, Ooh. again, you just want to just continue to live life as best you can be safe as be as safe as you can be and from there you know we're going to come through this we'll all come through this and um and from there you know that's all really i i can give you on it that's really it you know what tony you have given us more you have given us more than we could hope for i'm going to tell you um this was i think it was it's important to hear real-time testimonials because I do think so many of our people are not taking this as serious as they need to. I'm gonna tell you, listening to you right now is making me step up the game even more. Tony, we, you know what, the WVOM family is with you and your family as you go through these trials and tribulations. Um, but I, what the one thing I do love is the fact that you stay prayed up. Um, I don't know 
prayer is going to stop the virus, but I do know that it will keep your relationship with the Lord whole. Um, and I think that, quite frankly, I'm going to tell y'all this, and I know, I know this is probably not politically correct. But I do truly believe that for black folks, we need a spiritual awakening. And I believe that this could be one of those moments that help us become stronger and better. Because I'm going to tell y'all, there's nobody we can rely on. All we got is us right now. All we got is us. Tony, thank you for being here this morning. I appreciate you. We will keep you and your family in our, in our prayers. Um, and I pray that you and your family will be able to be back together soon so that you can celebrate the life and the legacy of Patricia. Because just the way you have described her makes me feel like she is all of our sister. Thank you, my brother, for being here with us this morning and having this difficult conversation. Thank you for having me. We God bless you all. We appreciate you, and we will keep you in our prayers. That is Tony Fryers, and he is the brother uh, Patricia Frierson. I want you all to say her name. Patricia Frierson. She was the first Chicago area coronavirus death. She was black. She came from our neighborhood. Auburn Gresham. You know how many people I heard in the first weeks as they was joking while the white guys was down at, at uh, doing St. Patrick's Day? Black folks was on the south side talking about they was they was they th th that melanin was gonna protect them. The first death, right? The first death came from our community. So I just want to caution us all, all, Maze Jackson self included. We are not invincible, right? I've been taking my vitamins and I've been doing everything. But God, did you hear him say that they all still came through their sister's house. Everybody was coming and every day they walked out and walked in and walked out and walked in. Mm -hmm. They could have potentially brought. Look, y'all, let's take this thing seriously. Let's protect our family. Let's protect our loved ones. I'm going to tell y'all what, though. I need something good. I need y'all to tell me something good because this coronavirus has been wearing me out this weekend. When I go outside and I see it's gloomy. It's like, I need some sunshine. So I'm going to tell y'all what. I don't care what y'all think. Y'all better get on the phone. Y'all better call up. And you better tell us something good on this Friday. It's 312-374-8130. Look, y'all, we need some inspiration right now. Some positivity. So I'm going to expect all y'all. Sister Zakia, get on the phone. You better get up here and tell us something good. Brother Hall, Art, we don't care. Don't you be calling up here telling us what we ain't. Young man. Oh okay. y'all, call us today. The world needs to hear something good. So tell me something good. This Friday we'll be back after traffic news and the weather. Patricia Frierson. Do not forget her name. She was the first coronavirus death in the Chicago land area. She came from our neighborhood. Auburn Gresham. Us. All we got is us, y'all. We'll be back. I was serious, right? No, most definitely. Okay. I didn't want to be, I wasn't like chipper. No. Somebody broke that company? No, I'm just checking. No. I got to check, you know, sometimes I'd be like, Jesus! <laughs> Can I get some? 
A hey, Clifton says he has a butcher shop on 79th and Langley or 75th and Langley with a full-time butcher in a grocery store, black owned. I might have to try and check that out. Yeah, I can do that. We used to have a butcher shop on 84th and Cottage for like really? decades, yeah. I guess they, they got old and died or something. Man. I would love to go to a butcher shop and just go pick my cuts. Yeah. Like, give me the ooh. I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to check him out. That's a good idea. I like that idea myself. I still think we should all chip in on a whole cow or half a cow. We got a half a cow. We were just talking about getting a freezer. I'm saying I think I'm gonna buy a, a deep freeze yeah. and just because I got all this food that I got, put it in the freezer. And just have a deep freeze and have your stuff. I, so, man. Well, just trying to fit what we have in our refrigerator. I can't fit what I right. <laughs> like we, I can't even make my damn ice cream with my ice cream maker because I can't put the 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 freezer in the freezer. Uh huh. Because it's like I got food in there and it's like a part of my staple of my diet is ice cream. <laughs> it's a staple. <laughs>
Is it sus? No. Close that door. Something good. Mm-hmm. Tell me that you love me, yeah. Tell me something good. Oh. Tell me that you like it, yeah. But no time. Just what you're known to say. Scott stole Richard Boykin's glasses. <laughs> Make you wish there was 28 hours to each day. Boom, boom, boom. What I got will give, will show up, do ya? Tell me something good. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger and Todd. In this coronavirus week, I need some inspiration. I need my people to pick up the phones. Give us a call, 312-374-8130. There's so many people out here tuning in, listening. I see y'all all all watching. I can tell everybody's at work because this is the time when the numbers fall off because they got to go get in the car. And the numbers are still here. But I'm going to tell you all. Exactly right. Nobody's going to that car. Todd, I'm telling you, like, if you turn on the TV, if you turn on the radio, it's depressing. Then if you go to social media, you got people... Coming up with all types of conspiracy theories, concoctions. Now, I'm not going to trip. I'm going to tell you, I think there's a little bit bigger things going on, but I'm not going to go there right now. Because right now, I think what we need is calm. We need a little levity. We need we need some good suggestions for Netflix. Because I don't watch everything. Um, but I need you to call me and tell me something good. Because people are listening. Tell Black Chicago something Something good. Tell me a little something, something. I'm going to kick it off, Todd. I know y'all going to get mad at me. But did you see President Trump and the Congress are sending checks out? They're sending out checks. $198,000, you get $500 per kid. Some people are getting a uh, $1,000 check if you are under a certain income level. Um, do you think that helps? So I think that helps. Ah, uh, I guess anytime you get a little money, it'll help for a second at least. Well, I mean, I think that um, I I think that this is it's weird to me because I feel like people have turned it into a political thing, where it's like, well, it is a political thing. Yeah. But I think like it's a lot of people saying they I don't want no Trump money. Shoot. Let me tell you what I bought a thousand dollars worth of groceries last week. And can I tell you something? It ain't easy. I was thinking, like, what happens if you can't pay your bills? See, I, Todd, you got that well, life. You See, you rich. You ball. You got that pension. So that check just come every month. Make me rich. But it make you secure. It makes me on a fixed income. But, but it makes you secure. It does make me secure. So if you are, think about how many people are in the gig economy right now. It's funny to me because I think so many times, it's like I'll be thinking about all the people that's talking about student loans and all that stuff. It's people right now that aren't going to be able to pay for groceries. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to look the gift horse in the mouth. When my check come, even though I didn't get the last check, right? When my check come, I'm going to cash it, I'm going to deposit it, and then I'm going to buy some more food. But I'm excited right. about the fact that there is that. You know what I'm excited about? That the, I, while I know there is a, a Wall Street bailout coming, there was a Main Street bailout first this time. 
Like it almost like the last time we had to save all the businesses while everybody else died. Yeah. This time they could. I know, but it's all good because because Barack. I know y'all y'all like. I he sent a check to everybody else but the people. Y'all like see I love my president. This president sends y'all a check. Y'all be like this racist sent me a Chinese check. <laughs> a check for the Chinese virus. <laughs> is the Chinese virus is that racist? You know why it's racist? The what? only reason, uh, actually, I, I wrote this on a Facebook post. The only reason it's racist is because he said it. <laughs> no, not because he said it. Because he's the only one said. It. If I said it and nobody else said it, but I'm like it's Chinese, Chinese, Chinese then I'd be. Amazed. I was calling the Chinese though when I went to Sundance. Remember, I told you the only people in the airport when I went to Sundance in January was the Chinese people because they knew what was happening. Real talk, they knew what was happening. And they didn't tell us. I'm going to stop, though. I want to tell me something good. I see y'all got me going down the path. Yeah. Let me go to Sister Zakia. Sister Zakia, tell me something good. Wow, wow. Good morning, Mason Todd. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my uh, condolences also go out to the brother who lost his sister and that family. And uh, just God stay with all our people that's working out here in the public, in that service industry and the health industry. Now, last night, this is something that can be very good. Last night I was privileged to sit in on a meeting on the internet in an app called Zoom. Yep. With some people oh. up north who's coming together doing things to help their community. But this is an app where you are on it and you can see everybody in the meeting, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can deal with various issues. Now, that's an avenue, I'm thinking, that we can use to do some very helpful things, maybe work on behalf of our elected officials or just keep it grassroots and doing whatever we need to do out in the community. Um, but we need some creative, smart people to come up with some action plans so we can utilize this app called Zoom. I love it. I was excited. People coming in from different parts of the north side uh, discussing how they got to put leaflets together to educate their people in their community about this, that, and the other. Uh, one man from Peoria, he's going to deal with the uh, penal institution and so, you know, that's something we can be doing in our community. But, Mace, I want you to get more information on this Zoom uh, app and how it works. Because what's in it from the black people can meet with uh, Dr. Willie Wilson's people, you know, the reparation yeah. movement. I mean, we can come together and do some very important things. I think that can be something good. Thank you, Sister Zakia. Actually, Zoom... Uh, we were talking about Zoom, the Zoom app earlier. Right. Um, I think we could start to, I mean, we got some time to have some meetings. I don't want to be meeting to be meeting to be meeting. But I do think that that is something good. Todd, I'm going to look at putting the Zoom app, and we're going to have Zooming. We're going to be Zoom, Zoom, Zooming. Find Zoom for me. That's something good, too. When we come back, play Zoom from uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, from uh, I'm Commodores. Gonna... Let me go to Mama D. Mama D! You on top of Chicago today. Tell me something good. Wow, wow. Oh, it's it. Good morning, good guys. Good That's morning. something good. It's about staying alive. Be still and know that your God is in charge. Let we forget. Let's drunk with the wine of the world. We forget the God of our weary years and our silent tears. Oh, Mama. You see how Mom D come in here and take you, take you there? That's why I love my seniors. You know what? Y'all keep the millennials. Y'all keep the millennials. I got to roll with Generation X. Mm -hmm. But y'all don't keep the millennials. Give me my seniors anytime. Let me go to Mark Azaya. How do I say that? Actually, hi. Good morning, ladies and Todd. It's Marquesa. And hey, Marquesa. Yeah, I'm, I'm a regular listening uh, listener when I'm not on the roll, but... Uh, I want to also express my sincerest condolences to uh, the families lost. Um, one thing you can do during this time is look around you, enjoy God's earth in terms of the greenery coming up. Look at the flowers. Uh, everything is coming into full bloom. I love to garden. Uh, get out if you can, right around your own 
perimeter and pick up, you know, pick up Ooh. some of the leftovers from winter, debris, and all of that. Um, I'm a uh, 67, well, 50 plus year Chatham person, and uh, we try to keep our neighborhood intact. So uh, it's 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 a lot to do. So I say H to the third power. Happy, healthy, and hopeful. Ooh. God bless you both and keep up the work that you do. Thank you so much. Uh, Cell, you heard that, man? She's trying to clean up our neighborhood. I, we, you know what? We could use this as a whole kind of watch. But we talk about it all. Plus, we're going to wrap this bad boy up. Tell me something good Friday when we come back. Tell me something good. Wow, wow. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. That you love me. Yeah. After 40 years of radio, First Church of Love and Faith in the Archbishop Lucius Hall. Woo! You ever seen Lucius Hall and his uh him and his his associates pastors matching Rolls Royces? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't seen that. Yes. The first church. I went to the center. I was a guest of uh, Zing. Who? Zing, Zing Ho? Uh huh. I'm going to start. You know, I'm going to tell Dr. Whitaker how y'all be playing me. That's all right. Hmm. I got y'all, Zing Ho. Tied the senior citizen. That's all right. Yes. That's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to have my own pavilion one time. Oh! Tell me something good. Wow, wow. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me that you love me. Yeah. Tell me something good. Tell me that you love me. Yeah, yeah. Got no time is what you're known to say. <laughs> I make you wish there was 48 hours to each day. She like, she got that stuff. Well, wah, 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 wah. Watch out. 48 hours in a day. You, you really only need like six minutes. <laughs> what did Robert Townsend say? It's the greatest two minutes of our life. <laughs> I, my favorite, one of my favorites is on uh, uh, Harlem Nights when he'd be like, she'd be like, let's make love all night long. And he was like, how about we do it real good for 45 minutes and fall into a deep <laughs> coma like sleep? <laughs> Yeah, I thought, uh, yeah. That I, was I understand that. <laughs> right, like. <laughs> yes, mean, Bob, I will accept the. Uh, do I still? The from, from President Trump. I'm still a citizen. Just because your president's an idiot, because we've been. So is he going to give checks to the undocumented immigrants? Should they get checks too? Because, I mean, they're going to. Because they're. Because shit. They're not citizens. So what? I mean, you let y'all tell it. The only thing I think undocumented people should get is health care, I don't want them being sick around me. Shit. I bet you wish we would have closed the border now. It's funny to me. I wonder what people... What could President Trump have done better? I don't think there's anything he could have... Oh, you mean this? Yeah. Oh. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty. You're saying the cut. But if you take away the cut. Well, it's, it's bigger than that. Okay. He, if he stopped trying to uh, decimate the government, but... Uh, this is that uh, conservative libertarian stuff. Oh, we back. Mm. Look, he got Richard Boykin's glasses on. <laughs> Richard's were a little bit more electric. I was like, who told you to put them on on TV? Hey, man, blue glasses are the huh? thing. Blue glasses are the thing, even though I did lose. They're maybe, not. Maybe that was my problem. <laughs> could, blue glasses are not the thing for seniors. <laughs> Whoa. Zoom. Zoom. I like the way. Well. away from here. I find so section clear. 
Who the one to be? Whoa, I'd like to greet the sun each morning. Chased upon the head, my mind, my mind. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Toy Stroger. That was the remix, man. Hey, Ty, but you oh, know. Eva Harris asked a question. She asked who? Her. She's a Facebook friend. Okay. She asked a, a question every uh, day. What? The What's in it for the black is, people? No. Babyface? Or Lionel Richie, the better baby face. composer. Baby face. <laughs> baby face. Wait, I'm just telling you. Wait, wait, wait. Go you want to think about it? Nope. Baby face. <laughs> I'm just telling you. All you had to do was go to the Urban League Gala and and, and baby face was like, Oh, you ain't know I wrote that? Oh, you you forgot about that. Babyface did an hour and a half set and then came back like, Oh, but let me sing the songs that I wrote for other people that you don't know. And then it was like, Dead. No, he got Lionel Richie faded. He got Lionel Richie. I, but, I, I think Lionel Richie's probably done some things you don't know about. But Todd, there's I nothing not, I don't know about. I would not argue. On okay, this. you can't, man. Come on, I'm saying shoot 'em up, bang bang movies, just like the boom. I got you. But I'm just saying that that when Babyface went the deal. Look, you messing up. You got me on squirrels, man. I'm trying to get black people to tell me something good on a Friday. I tell you something good. We're gonna uh, all get together and we're gonna walk around our neighborhood. And infect everybody. Well, are you not listening to what the mayor told you? Stay are, your butt in the house. We're not stopping in places. We're walking for exercise. Man, you, you better walk. Do y'all walk with like six feet between you? Do you like walk in a single file yeah, line? When we get back in the house, we all stuck in, uh, together. Oh, uh, so y'all just going to put the droplets in the air and then walk. This is sort of like the whole going to school for the... um. Geometry test. Man, you just trying to ruin my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Y'all tell you something good. <laughs> Let me tell you something good. Tony, tell me something good. Tell me something good. Hey, man. Good morning, man. Good morning, Todd. And everyone. Good morning. What's up, Tony? Man, everything's good, my brother. Hey, take this. So, uh, you know, Domino's got that 50% off the regular menu price item. So, you know that's something good right there. Wait, did I really? I didn't know that. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> 50% of everything at Domino. Oh, I'm about to hurt them. <laughs> and, the, and the delivery. So, uh, but that's only until the 22nd. But I'll tell you what. Hopefully with this stuff going on, Maze, um, hopefully people get to realize the value of each other Ooh. and appreciate each other and help each other out, man. Because um, I'll tell you what, there are some things that are out of our hands that we can't control, but we definitely could compose ourselves doing it, you know? So um, right. keep up the great work. Pass on the message, my brothers. And... Uh, We'll stay up, man. Hey, Tony, where you from, man? I appreciate you calling in. Where you from, brother? Hey, listen, I was born and raised in Little Village. I, I currently reside in uh, North Londo. Every time I see you on these events, I, I always say what's up to you, you know? Oh, Tony, Tony! Hey, man, that's Tony with the beard. Tony is my man. <laughs> Tony, every time I see Tony, he'd be like, what's up, man? He's like, let's do the show, bro. Uh, let's go to Art. Art, you on the Talk of Chicago 1690. Good morning, brothers. How are you brothers doing? Yeah, oh, great. dang, we made it to brother yeah. status. Thank you, Art. Thank you. I feel honored. I, I will say, still say again, as everybody's looking to see how community codes of conduct and family values <laughs> is so important now. And what Zakia said was basically people, communities have to bond together to make sure, you know, we all can stay on point and protect our neighborhood and our community. And uh, last point, Everything we do, you should do it out of love. That should be the motivation. You will always be successful if you do things out of love. It shouldn't be do, done for money or gratification from someone else. You should do it because that's the right thing to do. And I leave it there. May God continue to bless. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Art. And you know what? I feel good that we made it to, um, what did he call us? Young man? No, he didn't call us young man. He said... Brothers, oh. he called us brothers. Yes, we made it to equivalent status. <laughs> we not like the subculture. Milton, tell me something good, man. Don't you be telling me about no Irish Catholics. You better tell me something good. It made it possible for a black woman, man. Trump is making it possible for a black woman president. 
<laughs> Thank you, Milton. Milton says that Trump is making it possible for a black woman president. You know what I make this make me say? What, what my man Billy Sparks say? You ain't too far gone. This is a business. You ain't too far gone to see that yet. We ain't we ain't that black woman president just yet, y'all. We ain't not that gonna happen. <laughs> Hey Todd, it is it is the WVOA morning show. I'm gonna tell you what. Chicago, in times like this, and you know, this is the time, this is a weekend, it's gonna be warm outside, and everybody is going to be inclined to go out and try and do something and be like, I am invincible. Oh, no, I think it's supposed to be cold again. I oh think, good. I think we're dropping down. Okay. Yeah. Well, the fact of the matter is. People are going stir crazy. There's they, they ain't even been in the house a week. Just think oh, of Claire has already been like it feels like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I want to encourage the parents, because y'all, I need help too. The kids are saying already, why we can't go outside? They don't believe it's real. Um, we're getting announcements. I'm going to tell you, some of these announcements every day, they're really starting to make me just that much more. It feels like a TV movie. Like, or like, you know, like when you see, like when you used to see those things when you were a kid and I was, when I was a kid, I was always worried that there was going to be a cold, that the cold war was going to be a real war. Right. Right. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing now reminds me of the stuff. Remember that movie The Day After when it came out and it was so That spooky. is incredible, Maze. Why? Because that was exactly what I was thinking like two seconds before. You Man, I remember when the day after came and it wasn't scary. I mean, it wasn't a scary movie. It was just so dark and gloomy. And it just felt like, whoa. Scary. And then it was like yesterday I drove down Wacker. And I drove down Wacker at 9 o'clock in the morning and realized this is real. This is real. There were three people on the streets and it was mist and fog. And nobody was out. Look, y'all, it is times like this that we have to determine. It's times like this that we have to stick to each other. Now, for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Sonia Escobar, the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, for my co host, George Stroger, I am the host of the WVOA Morning Show asking every single day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. The station, 1690 AM, WVON. The web, WVON.com. Here at 6 o'clock, I would get home to Bowlingbrook with traffic, 720. Mm -hmm. All this week, 640. I'm telling you, and man. You know? no, look, I went to my office, the, my office during, like, right at 4 o'clock. I was just going to pick up, I had budgeted 4 to, 4 to, like, maybe 6. I was back home by 445. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. That's crazy. And and uh, there's no, you know, that you know how it usually jams up.